Good evening. Welcome to the Wednesday, December 27th, 2017 Select Board Board of Health meeting here in the town offices in South Deerfield. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope everyone had a happy Merry Christmas and um, just want to remind everybody that we are being taped tonight. So um, first thing we're going to do is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Um, we have minutes, but um, I would like, well, John isn't here tonight yet. Uh, I guess he's... Um, do you want to just jump down to Kevin, or do you want to wait a second? Yeah, I, um, whatever you'd like. You approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. There's only okay. two of us. Okay, yeah. I move to approve the minutes of uh, December 13th, 2017. And I'll second that, and... I'll abstain. Okay, okay I'll, well, wait. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. One abstention. One abstention. Okay. So we got that done. Um, any announcements um, other than just continue to have a happy holiday and be safe. Do you have any? I do not. Do you have any? I'm just very happy to be back. Oh, it was so <laughs> wonderful to have you back. I can't believe it. It's, he drove here himself. I didn't even have to go pick him up. No. <laughs> I know. I think it's wonderful. Um, okay. Um, how about uh, we do jump down to the alcohol license renewals? Okay. Uh, we can do this as a um, group. Is there... A, you check with the chief on all of these, Keith? No issues with anybody, right? Okay. We can do it um, by section. You want to do under section 12, under section 15, and mm -hmm. is, okay. Let me do that. Do you want me to read them? Yeah. Okay, so um, these are for um, alcohol license renewals for 2018 under Section 12, on-premises, Historic Deerfield, Deerfield Inn, Hotel Warren, Magic Wings Corp, Polish American Citizens Club, The Tavern, The Walk 3, uh, and Wolfie's Restaurant. I second that motion. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So under Section 15, off-premises, um, I make a motion to approve uh, licenses uh, for Circle K, Massachusetts, LLC, DBA, Circle K, uh, Deerfield Convenience Store, Deerfield Spirit Shop, Purple Metal Ventures, Inc., DBA, uh, Deerfield River Liquors, and um, Y, let's see, excuse me, <laughs> V-Y-A-S-A-M, Inc., DBA, Conway Road Neighbors. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? None. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, other license renewals? Yep. Do me to read those? Yep. Okay. The following businesses have submitted applications for renewal of their select board approved licenses for 2018. Uh, attorn uh, attorney uh, Peter Richard James and Catherine James Consulting. Uh, Catamount Auction, Inc., LLC, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, Deerfield Therapeutic Massage, Douglas Auctioneers, LLC, GMG Enterprises, Historic Deerfield, Inc., Deerfield Inn, Joseph uh, Costic, DBA Country Roads, Pioneer uh, Frameworks, slash Buy the Book, uh, Pioneer Valley Sales and Service, Inc., Richard uh, Batogo, DBA Richards Automotive, Harold Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, Lawrence Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, Yankee Candle Company, Inc. Perfect. Uh, is there any uh, no. discussion? No. All right, I second those. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Oh, okay. Oh, yes, we have. Why don't we add that one on? Okay. Why don't you do John? Oh, sure. Thanks. This is uh, an application for a um, BYOB, alcoholic beverage license for Giovanni um, Calabrese, for Giovanni Figs. So I make a motion to approve. 
um, the BYB. I'll second it. BYOB. And is there any further discussion? None. Nope. Hearing, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Is that just a BYOB? Yes. Or they didn't, yeah, he, he hasn't, they, well, he hasn't, he hasn't completed that okay. yet. It hasn't right. gone through yet. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so we got that done. And, and we're authorizing you to use the stamp key. Um, let's sign the MOU for the Solid Waste District Wood Pellet Bag Shed. Okay. Um, what that is, is we, we were in part of a pilot before, and um, uh, which was successful, and ja Janamine from the solid Franklin County Solid Waste Management District has gone ahead and got us another grant to actually um, uh, give us a, a weatherproof wood pellet bag shed, recycling shed, which they will maintain and they will collect every week, I think, uh, weekly collection of bags for pellets. And therefore, they will not be going to the incineration um, down in Springfield, which had some issues with those bags. And also, we wouldn't be trucking them down. Are those and just plastic bags? Yeah. yeah. And it will cost, it will only cost us $350 a year to participate. So um, it's a wonderful opportunity to keep us on the good list mm -hmm. at the incineration plant and um, have minimal, minimal impact of expenses. So thank you, Janamine, for following mm. through on this. Thank you. Uh, we got the grant through, again, the Mass DEP and the Community Innovation Group Challenge Grant. This is for the whole district now. Um, but people will only be coming to our transfer station with Deerfield transfer stickers. Every town gets the woodshed that's that votes to participate. Um, so I make a motion to participate for an annual fee of $350 for collection. Second. Is there any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let me, um, it's here to sign. Kevin, I know you've been very patient. If if John doesn't come pretty soon, then we'll, we'll start with you, because you've been waiting around anyway for quite a while. So it makes Well, me he was first good. on the list anyways. I know, but it makes me feel, and that's, makes me just feel bad, though. Why? He's John's going to miss out? No, he's, a, he's a, well, I know. That's why we could, we could do him right away. <laughs> I know. Well, John would be faster, but Kevin has been, he didn't miss dinner. Thank you. Oh, you know what we could do um, while you're here? Why don't What's we that? do the Frontier Regional Sewer Use Abatement um, application? Um, my inclination is to abate the whole thing, Kevin, and then work up a new agreement. Um, but I think we need to discuss it because I'm not really, I'm a little foggy I, on it, maybe. I believe I was looking into this a little bit today, and I believe that we've had an agreement with Frontier for a certain um, billing amount every year since at least we have on record back to 2008. Um, and it, it seems like the readings weren't accurate, or the readings were accurate, but they weren't, they didn't take into account the separate meter that they have there. So I think it might be worth, um, uh, as you said, uh, abating it in full and, and um, amending well, th amending their their um, their current agreement. Um, this, not to confuse the issues, but we have a town hall bill that is like $7,500 $7, and it's up from like $750. Correct. So, could it's because, we, it's because of the irrigation system yes. that we have here for the ball field, and and um, that's similar to what happened in Frontier because they've been pretty consistent usage, except for it looks like their usage just like went through the roof because that included the irrigation. So, how about if we if we abated both, 
and then um, worked out a new agreement with Frontier that they, I mean, they have to, if they, they have make to pay. In, yeah, if they, right. they, if they have they have to pay for it, but it'd be more of an amendment of the existing one. So correct. It would be, right. So it would not actually be a new agreement. Right. right. So it's nothing that's new. It would just be uh, updating per Up, se. Yeah, and amending them to read to make sure yeah, they that they to, correct, that they read their correct right. and, and um, notify. Us. I, I reached out to Bob Lesko today, and I asked him. I said, I was just confirming that they had a second meter. And he says, yes, they definitely have a second meter. He says, but when. Um, the water department comes in, they only read that one meter. I says, so what you need to do is you need to coordinate with Roger and say, you know, tell me when you're coming in. So that way, when Roger go ahead and reads his meter, then he's able to go ahead and read his irrigation meter, deduct the difference. Right. And uh, that would make all the difference in the world. I, I haven't had a chance to really review this, but looking quickly, there's an amount of 518,000 gallons that they're saying was from the building, but their meter reading was 1.875 million gallons. Correct. So <clears throat> I'm going to assume here that the water department recognized the 1.875 million gallons, and that's what they put down as a meter reading. Correct. Nobody's deducted it. Correct. So is, is your suggestion to only bill them for the 518,000? No, I th I think I think they had a they had an agreement <clears throat> that that would be the number whether they used that amount or didn't use that amount over the last I don't know what since you mean by an agreement for a number. So I think they had a set the, amount a set, set amount. They, they said yeah. $5700 yeah. every time the billing right. can see whether they used it or not. Right. They 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 uh they had that certain amount and then um so I think that maybe the the amount that they would be charged would obviously be might be higher than that than that figure uh, going forward, but it will be a true accurate reading based on what we want from all municipal buildings. Is a true reading of what they're using. Right, but the the five hundred eighteen thousand gallons is what was an accurate reading for their building. No, no that no, that's that what's been that's that's been this that has been the set amount that they have paid f since two thousand and eight. So, why so? At this point, nobody knows what the irrigation meter said at that time? That is correct. Correct. Okay. That's, that's so, part of the rub. So what rub. we're suggesting is just, just as we know that the athletic, you know, the new ball field out here was irrigated heavily this year because it was brand new and it was dry, so they irrigated heavily. So our normal bill went from $750 to $7,500, is that we abate both of them and then asked Frontier to give us an updated or an amended agreement that was based on the true reading and that we do a true reading for the town hall as and, well. And get a, and get a second meter we, for this we, building. We, 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 we had this exact conversation over a year ago. Mm -hmm. And when we set that rate last year, I, I wanted to include all the municipal buildings. And you suggested that we not do the schools because it was unfair because they did not budget that extra money. Mm -hmm. So when we met with the school committee here, I made it perfectly clear to them yes, that they did. needed to make sure because they were going to you yep. know, get a substantially larger bill. I don't know if this 518,000 gallons, you know, how, that, how we arrive at that number. Um, that was just a previous agreement. We're not sure either. It's a previous agreement, uh, you know, but I think if we have to try to calculate and come up with an estimate of how many gallons they did use right. and charge them the, the exactly. same rate. Yes. Exactly, yes. We, I agree oh, yeah, with you no, completely. No, no, okay. Yeah, not that. just washing it. No, but that's what But we just till we can figure that. it out. Right. We want an updated, amended amount. Okay, but when you talk about abating the whole thing, you, you, have to, you, have to you should the make an, you, you can't just make an adjustment? No. No. I well, I mean, if we, From if a we, bookkeeping point of view, I yeah, if we abate not. the whole thing, then we can get a, a new agreement and get a new reading. All right, and get but what a, about for this year? We, we will get money for this year. But what amount? That's what I'm, I'm, that's I'm what, I think that's what it, that, what we yeah, don't know right saying, now. So to how to is, figure that okay. right at this minute, we won't we, know. Yeah, but you, you condition the abatement on the fact okay. that we're going to have a negotiated, updated amount. All right, if, if, it's, if they've got the money, they should, they my suggestion is they have the money. What we could do is make uh, or request that uh, Mr. Lesko or somebody at the school 
read that meter for a couple of months and see. And it, whatever it says, we could probably accurately say that's what the building uses right. 10 months of the year. Right. Or nine months, however many schools in there. And that's what they get billed for. Mm -hmm. Does that sound that's fair? This it does. But that's what okay. I'm saying. We need yeah. a correct, okay. updated All amount right. in case this is well, not correct. Sure. Right. And, and my only thing is that I know in the past that the, the amount that they paid was quite low. And it was my uh, contention that it, it was a bill that was for a regional school that mm -hmm. all the towns contribute okay. and shouldn't be yep. subsidized by but the ratepayers. But that's why okay. I feel like our, our abatement should be conditional on a new updated amount. Yeah. Right. Well, since they have the meters in place, I've, I, can, can I, know, make, can I make a shoot, suggestion? Shoot. Yeah. If we go ahead and we look at what their spring reading was, yeah. their spring reading would actually give them usage for the winter. Yeah. Correct. You may end up having a little bit because the reading is in May, so you may end up having some irrigation in there, mm -hmm. but it's going to be a lot closer than the one that you just, that the last that reading that they just got, because the last reading Agreed. goes from May until October, which is obviously their their entire irrigation yep. season yeah. per se. Why don't yep. we suggest so that? You, Why don't we suggest yeah, that they give fine. us last year's spring reading yeah. and, and we go off of that? Yep. Yeah. I think that's a fair way of doing it. I do. It. Yeah. I, just I do feel too. like we shouldn't Oh it no! Should, I, 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 I get it accurate. I, I don't want to abate it without some kind of right. But I. Through. But also, I, I, and I, and I know we're all busy and we all could, we're we're pulled in so many different directions. But you know, it's just one of those things that you know, they only do it twice a year. It's something that's important. They got to work out a they plan to make sure. It out. Yeah, absolutely. It, absolutely. And if I could, I'd like to make the same recommendation for the uh, town building here mm -hmm. yeah. is to go off of our winter rate, which was. Uh, 74,000 some odd gallons, uh, which would bring us up to like 700 and call it $800 worth of a bill compared to $8,000 worth of a bill. I think um, that's okay, fair so too. Okay, so we're gonna make, uh, so we make the motion, or I make the motion that we um, abate the bill from Frontier conditional on getting an updated number from the- Spring reading. Sp spring, spring reading. And we do the same thing for the town hall you bait the town hall and base it on the real reading for the actual spring. usage right yeah accurate usage does that make sense mm -hmm. yes okay yeah. um does someone want to second i'll it? second it <laughs> okay all those in favor aye aye, aye. okay so key did you did, did you get that okay <laughs> all right <laughs> no i mean i don't she's typing you and got it well, i know but i just i don't no that's good i don't want to hear phone calls from the other towns that were you know, trying to rip everybody off. But I feel like it's really important to say that we get no abatement until we get the conditional sure. agreement. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Um, thank you, John, for coming, because we're going to start with you right oh, away. Wow. Um, I <laughs> know well, that... Well, I already figured he, he's, his is a lot shorter than mine. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, he's only got one. I got we'll, seven. We'll skip down to the uh, budgets. I just... I appreciate everything that um, everyone has done over the holidays. I know it was really yeah. um, our uh, public safety, police, and highway um, over the last weekend, holiday weekend, was really um, stressful. And thank you both for, and please express thank you to your um, to the rest of the employees because they were just wonderful I, to be out. I also wanted to uh, say it was a great uh, post on Facebook, I think, on the Deerfield Police page about uh, e Deerfield um, South County EMS and Deerfield on call um, having having Christmas dinner together. That was was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, we have a great. lot of good friends over there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's great to it see just, the different teams just, working it together. It was really and, nice, and I didn't mean to exclude the EMS out too. I know it was really hairy uh, for them to work this week past weekend too. So Where was anyway, your we appreciate everyone <laughs> being um, out there protecting us and being out working. Um, so we could all have a safe yeah. and happy Christmas. So thank you. Okay, John. You want to talk about budget, or you want a general update from the police department, or where do you um, want to start? You know what? Take I anyway. think why don't we do an update first, and then we can go right into the budget. So anticipating meeting with the Board of Selectmen tonight, I ran some preliminary numbers for year-end. As of 3 o'clock this afternoon, we were at 17000 801 police calls for service this year. That includes area checks, that includes alarms, motor vehicle accidents, that includes 
filling up the cruiser with cruiser maintenance, that's daily productivity of the police department. So if you break that down per shift, it will give you an average call ratio per shift of about 34 calls in an eight hour period that people are active. So they're out there and they're doing their job, which I like to see, and I know I certainly get positive feedback from the residents. Mm -hmm. People actually will say, do you have three or four people on duty at a time because your cars are everywhere? And I have to explain to everybody that no, we only have two on but they are proactive and they are everywhere and that's what we want that deterrent that natural presence so to date there's been 213 active investigations 315 arrests of which 14 were aggravated assaults 32 drunk drivers 25 drug offenses on and on and on i didn't run the miscellaneous numbers on the side it's been a busy year for us we've dealt with several embezzlement case cases, elder fraud cases. We had a couple of cases that just went to grand jury. Indictments uh, were sought and uh, they were completed. Those will be coming out for news release very shortly as the arraignments come out. Mm -hmm. The arraignment dates have not been scheduled. Uh, we had $31,000 worth of scratch tickets sold, uh, stolen. That was solved. We recently had a break in at Dr. Schmidt's office mm -hmm. on Christmas morning. Oh, geez. That's been that. solved. Right. We have a written confession in hand. I sent my midnight shift home at 10 o'clock that morning after solving it because his eyes were rolling back in his head. That summons will be drawn up later this week and he will be criminally charged at Greenfield District Court. So the people are out there, they're doing an amazing job. We have amazing police officers uh, across the board. Again, busy year. Uh, we had a fatal accident on Sugarloaf Street in April. Mm -hmm. This year we saw the addition of a motorcycle to the police department and i'm still looking for feedback from the residents including the board of selectmen the finance committee 99.9 .9 of what i've got to date is all positive i actually anticipated more two three five ten percent negative but i'm actually hearing all positive which is the same thing i got in sturbridge because if you remember a year ago in sturbridge i was totally against this program and I literally rolled my eyes when we rolled it out in Sturbridge. And the residents loved it. It was a huge community tool. And it seems as though the Deerfield community has bought in the same exact way. So what we've seen is it's a very productive tool for visibility, community policing. It gives you that approachable front. And it also is very useful as a traffic enforcement tool. Mm -hmm. To date, there has been 2,000 121 motor vehicle stops this year. 1,355 have resulted in verbal warnings. About 75% of our traffic stops are verbal warnings. We like interacting with the residents. We like taking the learning approach and correcting ongoing issues. And when it all of a sudden becomes a second, third, or fourth traffic stop with the same individual, then an alternative course of action is sought. 540 actual tickets have been issued this year. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if I know Carolyn's aware of this, but I don't know who else is aware of it. For the past about three years, I've been working on a regional computer project. And the regional computer project is sharing police software on a server through the state out in Chelsea. And it's going to connect 24 of the 26 towns in Franklin County on the same server. Mm -hmm where all police departments can see each other's information, arrest reports, incident reports, officer safety information, open up chat screens on the mobile data terminals with each other, see where people are responding to on domestics or motor vehicle accidents, true interoperability for police departments and fire departments countywide. It was a over a million dollar project that I spearheaded, like I said, about two and a half to three years ago, and it's really just starting to come in to date. In January, we will be the first agency going live in Franklin County. My counterparts that I started in Central Mass are fully operational at the New Braintree Regional State Police Dispatch Center. They have 10 police departments that are fully operational. They're online, they're sharing information, and it's working incredible. Okay. So now we're starting Franklin County, and I am working with seven, seven towns initially to roll out right after Deerfield. Basically, I'm the problem child. I'm yep. the troubleshooter. I'm the agency that's jumping on first, that's going to work out all the bugs and issues, and then we're gonna roll in 
Orange, Sunderland, Shelburne, Irving, Northfield, Gill, right thereafter. As soon as I get them operational towards March, I'm going to start an additional five to seven towns. Once police is done by year end, we're going to start rolling in fire departments in hopes that we can share all this information. If there's a safety issue at a residence and a fire department's dispatched to it, right. they can see that there's a safety and a caution issued at that residence. They won't be able to see specific police details. Right. Why? But they'll see a caution there. That's good. The good part of this also is, number one, as part of the purchase of this software, is it's free. That's year one. Mm. We pay about $10,000 a year in police software. Year two, the state has agreed to pick up 50%. Since we are going on a centralized regional server, our $10,000 fees are being reduced to about $5,000 because we are partnering with 24 agencies. So the $10,000 is dramatically reduced down to about $5,000. Of that $5,000, the states agreed to pick up 50%. So as I spearhead this project for Central Mass, but also Franklin County, for true officer safety and information sharing, uh, functionality of police departments bringing us into the 21st century it also is to contain costs for the town of Deerfield it's to reduce our operating budget from ten thousand dollars a year hopefully to five thousand if I can convince the state to keep picking up fifty percent of those costs we're looking at twenty five hundred twenty seven hundred dollars a year again versus that ten thousand dollars a year so there is a method to the madness Carolyn also knows I'm working on the radio system the radio system in the county is aging, it's 12 years old, it's been a constant problem for fire, EMS, police. Uh, we have 14 towers, those towers are not timed correctly. I won't get into uh, graphic detail with you because a lot of people it goes over their head, but there is problems with the system. We are looking at going onto the statewide trunked 800 megahertz system. With that said, uh, I've been working with the Executive Office of Public Safety, the Undersecretary, and we're working out a plan. Um, the FERCOG has been amazing, and uh, we'll see where that heads in the near future. So we're working on the radio system as well. Most people don't know, in December, I was elected president of the Franklin County Chiefs of Police Association. Great. Um, I still am the representative to the Massachusetts Chiefs of Police Executive Board. There's one representative for every county in the state. so. I basically once a month drive out to Westboro and I sit with chiefs of police and superintendents of the state police once a month and go over all the major issues across the state and I bring in the small town western mass perspective. When they come in with all these high budget numbers and training issues and want to increase everything through the roof because they come from 100 to 300 people agencies, I'm the one in the room with a sledgehammer going, time out, there is western mass and there's central mass, and there are small agencies out there, and it has to be cost effective. We need to be able to afford it. So once a month, I still do go down to Westboro and, uh, and meet with a lot of great people down there. The, uh, the only thing I'm working on right now in town for budgetary-wise, and Kip is aware of this, is I met with three different companies with key card access. And it's been on my five-year hit list. Now that I've been chief of police five and a half years, it's constantly been on my list that we've never really rekeyed anything. Right. When I came into the police department, one of the first things I did was rekey the evidence room. And I locked everybody out. We did a full audit. Only two people have access to the evidence room in the police department. I am not one of them. So if a problem gets reported to me, I go to my two evidence officers and I pull their keys. Now I bring in an independent auditor and I gut those records to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Everything is present and accounted for. And it's worked very well, but I'm also a realist. Mm -hmm. I think that town hall and the police department, we need to look at rekeying them but we also have such a fluctuation in committees, police officers, or keys that you can go right down to leaders and make copies. Mm -hmm. We have no idea what's out there. Right. So what I wanted to look at was how cost effective is it to start with a few doors and little by little add a door to a year. What's the software to operate a year? And I'm actually surprised because all three companies have told me 
the maintenance fee on the software is 100 to 200 dollars a year which is is really nothing to me that's fine so i'm waiting for all three quotes to come in i want to see kind of where we're at does it make sense to us is it high is it low then i think kevin and i will sit down and, and kind of hash through them and figure out if it's reasonable and then we possibly would be looking for the board's support mm -hmm. to start somewhere do we start with two three four doors or I initially have the quote coming in for seven doors. Okay. West employee, back entrance, front entrance, back entrance to the police department where all the employees come in, the evidence room, the front main lobby entrance to the police department. But then number seven is I had them put one on for the conference room in the police department. And the reason I wanted that door done was because I want the committees in the town to be able to use it. Right. I can lock the inside door into the police department and I can give the finance committee, bye Brenda. Bye, bye Brenda. Right. I can give the finance committee or you know, the board of selectmen or anyone else access permission to get in there and now you have an additional conference room but I'm not worried about security in the police department. Right. So it gives you more functionality as the town as a whole versus me as the police chief going, it's my room only. Right. So I think it may make sense, but I don't want to jump to conclusion yet. I want to see the numbers. You do, I, you do have better chairs. Driven. Huh? You do have better chairs. I do have better chairs? Better chairs. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, uh, that's all the things happening in the police department right now. I'm more than happy to entertain questions. I just drafted that up quick earlier. Good. If you guys have questions. Um, are the, any of your statistics um, unusually high or show an increase from last year? I, don't, I can't remember off the top of my head what, what some of those numbers were from last year, obviously. But. You know, when you run numbers, I don't want to say as low as us, but when you run numbers of, of 280 arrests or 300 or 330, those numbers seem like big variables. But, but they're, they're not. Maybe. In all reality, they're not. You could have 37 drunk drivers in one year, and all of a sudden, 28 the following year, and you're like, oh my God, what, are you guys not out? No, it, it's just, that's the way it is. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you'll have a year where there's 43. So if you're going to look at trends with smaller agencies, you really have to do a five to 10 year trend mm -hmm. versus a year to year, because the numbers will just, they'll look foggy, if that makes sense. So, yeah. so do you think there's any bad trends or good trends or no trends I think that we are the same as most agencies out there we have our domestics we mm -hmm. have problems with alcohol we have problems with drugs. drugs we had an overdose last week where CPR was in progress uh, South County EMS did an amazing job administering Narcan and reviving yep. the patient we had an overdose death two and a half weeks ago and now we still have them. the the problems are everywhere. And with 91, 5 and 10, 116, Amherst, Greenfield, Northampton, all within spitting distance of Deerfield, right. we have it all. It's all here. We are a commuter hub community. So I think we are pretty much on board with every other agency out there. But I think our crime is generally, if you were to do a comparable, less than most towns our size. And again, I attribute that to our people out there doing their job. Yeah. Yeah. When people drive through town that are looking to create a problem, they know when those cruisers are on the road. I'll point you back to an incident in January. One of my police officers witnessed a car that was broken down out of gas. And he literally yeah, just went over to help. Yeah. Yeah. And if you remember, the guy that ran out of gas was going to commit an armed robbery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You, you need to be out there. You need to be visible. Yeah. And that's what we encourage our people to do. So Little Deerfield is beautiful. It's gorgeous. The crime rate is low, but that's also the way we want to keep it. Mm -hmm. Doing a good job. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, so, I, I had ahead. a question. Go ahead, Kip. Uh, in, in your budget, I didn't see anything for that motorcycle. Are you going, were you planning to release it, or was this a 
a one and done thing. No, it was a two-year lease, so I, uh, I literally was going to take money out of the donation account and kind of mix it up with general expenses of new equipment for the second year of the lease, and then I was going to reevaluate whether we want to keep it or not. So ne next fiscal year, I think you can plan on having a full conversation with me of kind of where we're at, but it was a two-year lease initially. It was. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's $4,400 a year, yeah. which included everything. It included the lights, uh, the radio install, the whole bit, and uh, I guess... 18 months in, we're going to have to make an educated decision. Do we want to keep it? Do we not? Do we want to renew the lease and get a new bike? Do we want to buy it and keep it outright for 10 to 15 years? They put on, uh, I was told yesterday, I think yesterday, they told me they put 8,000 miles on the bike this year. And $4,400, uh, most departments are keeping those bikes 10, 15, some 18 years. I mean, they're keeping the Harleys for a long period Good of time. Bike. They won't last as long as your cruisers, but that's okay. Now, the cruisers we burn through. Yeah. The cruisers are, are five to six years, and they're oh. gone. The motorcycles are, are literally... I mean, you go over to UMass, they got bikes that are they're 12, 13 years old. They're still oh, running yeah. them daily. Right. Yeah. But they probably don't have that kind of mileage either like your cruisers do. Yeah. You know. Um. John, the only thing I always was just worried about safety. So just if you could keep an eye on, you know... Any, any issues with safety from for officer safety? I, you know, I'm just concerned about our officers who might get hurt. So, you know, it's a little bit more dangerous to ride a motorcycle than it is a cruiser. So that was my only concern. So if you have any input on that, that would be. That's, uh, that's been one of my major concerns from day one. What I can tell you about it is we send them down to a 40 to 45 hour course. And the three hardest courses in law enforcement is motorcycles, drug recognition expert, accident reconstruction, and number four is truck team, called NASTY certified. Really? That's number four. NASTY certified? They have nasty, to be, they have the to be National nasty. Association oh, of... Team, yeah, it's. I mean, the stuff they go through with them is brutal. It is literally, it's, it's horrific. Yeah, it's two to three weeks of, of breaking down trucks. Yeah, from top to bottom, inspecting brakes through to axles. So, the motorcycle school is intense. Very intense. They teach them everything about that bike. Day one of that motorcycle class, they put. Uh, bars down the side of the bike so when it's laid down it doesn't damage the bike. Your goal day one is to go into that school and lay that motorcycle down on its side 20 plus times and lift it up. They want everything out of your system with stress and anxiety. They want you to know if a car pulls out in front of you how to lay that motorcycle down on its side and ride it on the ground. By the time they are done at the end of the week, they cannot even grip with their fingers because they've released the clutch so many times, they are taking Advil every night and they're putting their hands in ice baths. If you think I'm joking, yeah. talk to any one of my people that I've sent. The class is utterly brutal. Their backs are hurt, their legs are hurt from lifting that 700 pound motorcycle all week long. They take them through dirt trails, through sand trails, around cars. They make them do turning radiuses that I could never do. Upstairs, and downstairs. Absolutely. They do stairs. Yeah. I mean, it's insane what they make them do to understand the ramifications of a wrong move on that motorcycle. And when you hear about the training and they start going through and you start seeing the daily videos, you go, all right, all right. It makes you less stressed about putting them on the I road on it. They get a fairly so, high uh, dropout rate on that, too. There's a, a, I think, a 67% pass rate. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people go back for, uh, for a second time and second week. It, yes. From my point of view, it, they can have all the schooling they want. Mm -hmm. and they can learn how to slide the thing. But if a car is coming at them on the wrong side of the road, mm -hmm. there's not a lot they can do. No. Um, you know, there, there's even, even driving in, when it's wet. Uh, it's hard to determine where the oil is on the road when the roads are wet, uh, things like that. There, so it, I can't believe I'm saying this, but it is 
a lot more dangerous than being in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Are you actually agreeing with me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you know, goodness! And I need I, to write this down. <laughs> I, you know, I. I no, I, I, I just, I, I know. I, I, this is more. I'm a mother. You know, I'm just worried. Well, it's, it's about not. It's not. Officers. It's not. It's not the mother in you. It, it is. It is a concern, and it isn't the ability of the person on the motorcycle. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. today, it's well, the that's environment feel, around it's you. So you know, the other guy. It's it's the other well, guy. But one of the things they teach yeah. you is always to look in for escape routes. That if mm -hmm. a car is coming at you, head on, where are you going to go? Are you going to go in yeah. their lane? You're going to try the breakdown lane. Is there an area where you actually can take that bike off road? Can you decelerate? Can you accelerate? They go through all this stuff with you, yeah. and you've been racing for a lot of years to know yeah. that there's many options. I can put somebody in a, a regular cruiser that doesn't have the same ability. And they'll crack up the cruiser, sure. and my motorcycle cop will squeeze around them right. because you have a much smaller well, area you're looking to get through. I, I, I think that what you described, their training, is, is very important. It, it's, it's not just important, it's crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because in my life, I've known a lot of people who ride motorcycles. They think they know how to ride, but they really don't. And I've witnessed too many people get hurt on motorcycles just because they don't understand how they work. And they think that because they can brake faster or accelerate faster or turn, they think that they can avoid all this stuff. But in reality is when you're in a, especially on a street bike, when something goes bad, you go in one direction and that's straight. You know, so it's, it's tough to get out of that. Um, you know, I, I w was not against, you know, the town getting a motorcycle. You know, in the beginning, I didn't have really any choice in it. But, uh, you know, I, I just don't see a, a real benefit to it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I, it isn't a lot of money, um, and it's, it's more of a, I think with me too, it's a safety thing, you know. I'm mm -hmm. just, I don't want to see somebody get hurt on the thing because of some other motorist not I mean, that's my only being, you know, on top of it, you know. But that's just So one concern. of the things when I researched it is I looked for police motorcycle accidents. And what I found through uh, the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, NHTSA, is there are none. There's fatalities for motorcycle accidents, but there's no true statistics for police motorcycles. And I dug everywhere. Mm -hmm. I called programs across the state because I had your same concerns, and I had these concerns in Sturbridge. And I literally, even as a patrolman or the day shift supervisor, I literally weighed the same issues going, okay, and I think I told you this before, but a few of my people have been hounding me for years to try this program, and I literally locked in my heels for the first three to four years as chief and said, no, not happening, not happening, not happening. And I finally said, you know what, all right, fine, we will give it the opportunity. But correct me where I'm wrong here. I've also told you guys the same thing I told my officers. The first person that gets injured on that motorcycle, I will put that thing on a flatbed, so fast your head will spin. It will be on its way back to East Coast Harley, and it will be turned in. There's no hot rodding on it. There's no showing off. If there's a problem with that motorcycle, and it is not being used as a tool, it is gone permanently. I know. I know you were really... So were I'm trying every that. avenue I can, and I have the same concerns you do cost-benefit analysis with the risk safety factor thrown into it. Where are we at? Does the community see a benefit? Is it a useful tool? There's safety concerns with everything we do. We walk into sure. violent domestics in Deerfield at least once to twice a week. And I'm not talking about pushing matches. I'm talking about violent domestics. Mm. We deploy tasers. We use pepper bays. Every one of my guys wears and girls wear bulletproof vests. They're all trained to the highest level. There's safety inherent in everything we do, and the motorcycle program is no different. So what I have to do is, is weigh out those odds of that risk-benefit factor, cost-effectiveness, and, as you said, safety. And is the program successful? If it is, how do we keep it successful? How do we keep it cost-effective? Do the residents enjoy it? I mean... The $4,400 lease at the end of it, we have the option to buy the bike. It's about a $26,000 bike with $2,000 worth of lights on it. 
I think we have the option at year two to purchase it outright for seventeen or eighteen thousand dollars. Then we keep it for 10, 12, 13 years, whatever it may be, 15 years. And overall, it's costing us $600 a year to insure it. Let's say $500 a year maintenance, so $1,100 a year. And let's write out the purchase price of that initial $25,000, $27,000 over that 13 years. It's costing us roughly $3,000 a year, $4,000 a year. Is that worth it as that tool? There's a safety factor in everything I do. Every time I put a cop on the road with a gun on, pepper mace, bulletproof vest, in a cruiser, they're responding to calls, they're chasing after cars. If somebody comes down 5 and 10 at 70 miles an hour, my people have to get up to 80 to 90 to catch them. There's safety in everything we do, and we try to mitigate it. So, again, in the next six months, I'm really going to have to evaluate and figure out, is this working? Is this something we want to keep? And that's where I really want input from the select board, the finance committee, but the townspeople. Do you like this? Do you see it as a useful tool? And if the answer is yes, then I guess uh, I would consider keeping it. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, John, I just want to comment that one of the reasons I'm um, so supportive of all the work you've done with the radio um, stuff and, and the meetings that I've gone to with you, um, it's really um, been wonderful because it is going to save us money on the operating budget, but what I think is, is, is the uh, information will be shared with uh, the fire departments mm. or EMS the key. so that when they go to that residence, you can see what has happened at that residence because um, I think from, you know, because of drugs and the mm -hmm. marijuana and all this stuff that's happening, um, People will have a heads up before they go into um, our, our people will have, yeah, absolutely have heads up of what's happening at that residence, a history of that residence, and I, I think that's really huge. And I, I I know you've put in hours and hours of work, um, usually, you know, off off your family time, and mm -hmm. I just want you to know how much I appreciate that and how much we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Not just the dollars that you will save the town, but really what's going to be potentially a safety issue for all our responders. And um, so I really want to thank you on that. Mm. And and a lot of times we don't have coverage. I mean, we are, we've had the towers go off, and we, we, we have people out there with not being able to reach. I mean, we went through a horrible time a couple of years ago, and it just seemed to be focused on Deerfield. Now it's focused somewhere over in New Salem and wherever. But it's still, it's just um, an old system, and... This is a huge upgrade for us, a huge opportunity, and John has put a huge amount of work mm -hmm. in, and it's so impressive to go to these meetings with him and support him, and yeah. just, you know, he has to tell me when to, when to, what I have to say, when I have to <laughs> say it, but um, it, it, it really is, an, it's an impressive amount of work, and I want you to know I appreciate it from a safety point of view. Um, the dollars are wonderful, and that's a good side benefit, but it, I, mm. I really think the safety issue of, of having all that information available and having good radio contact all the time with all our responders is, is just a huge, huge thing. So thank you. Especially because it's not always the police with the bulletproof. You know, it might be EMS mm -hmm. or something that hits that door first or a, you know, a fireman or anything like that, and you're coming through that door and you don't know how many domestic abuse or violent attacks to have come out of that house. You just don't know what you're walking into. It's, it's, it's really so true. dangerous today. So that'll be a, between the software and the radios, that's going to be a huge, huge advantage. Well, the radios are huge. The software itself was about a million dollars, I think, with state IT purchasing additional software and their time into it. It'd probably be total about a $2 million project. Mm. Radio-wise, I'm looking at about $10 million. Yeah. It's a big job. If you take fire, police, EMS, start adding in pagers for firemen and EMTs in the whole system, it's about $10 million, and that's before adding additional tower sites out here. Mm -hmm. So, But it would give us interoperable communication with state police and all of us. So it would be amazing. Uh, states building out the system across, and I think uh, they're at $122 million, So I'm only looking at $10 million for Franklin County. It's no big deal. <laughs> well, I just want to thank it's you because I know – how much time you've put into it. So yep. I appreciate it. Um, um, so my, 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 I don't know if it's my last comment, but one of the things that I, I kind of want to point out, and I, I, don't, I know that you're aware of this, uh, but it was, it's kind of my overall concern with the town. So over the last five and a half years, the police budget's gone up over 36%. And with the large dollar amount, 
in the, it, the same dollar amount that it's gone up over the last five and a half years, it's only going to take a little over four years to get to that same amount. And if all of our town services keep growing like this, and I see what our tax rates do, it's going to be, we're, we're getting to a point where our taxes are, you know, nobody's going to be able to take advantage of the, the new tax bill that came out of Washington because all of our taxes are going to be over $10,000. And I totally agree, and I like the fact that if I'm coming home from Amherst, I see a cruiser on 116 on North Hillside Road on Route 5 and 10, because these guys are around, they're very visible, and I couldn't agree with you more that this helps keep the crime rate low. But we, I'm just concerned about not just this, but all the budgets keep growing so much, and we've got to this point where the dollar amounts are so large that they're just gonna keep growing faster and faster as we go forward. And I don't know what the answer is, um, but. I think it's, uh, it's like 26%, isn't it? Well, well, it's you, six, it's six percent the 611, and less. If you take the 611 and you subtract it from the 820, you come out with about 35 you know, point but something. Here's, here's the percentage change. If you add this up, well, yeah, I don't care how you do that. You just, if you take these two dollar amounts and you subtract it, that the increase over 611 is 35 point something percent. You're, you're talking payroll, right? Yeah. I, I, the, the budget. Oh, okay. You yeah, think the well, budget, you know, this, the expenses are only the expenses about six are percent, six and a half percent. Right, the uh, ninety-five thousand—that's just expenses. Uh, yeah, but um, that's seven years. This is if five. you take nineteen, and you, this you start at thirteen. It's seven years worth of budget. If you if you're doing this, or if you add. Oh, I'm sorry, not five. Six and a half years. Yeah. Okay. But that, that my my I, point I, is I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. squashing. It, it's just it's. I'm trying to make the, the point, and I'm going to do this with everybody, that these things, you know, I don't care who's in front of us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to probably agree with most everything they have to say because each and every aspect of it is true. Mm -hmm. But when it gets to a point that, you know, where, you know how, do we, how do we sustain this? You know, we keep talking about this isn't sustainable. It's sustainable. Isn't sustainable. You know, it is right. And, and this is still a small community. Our population has not grown. Uh, our, our people coming can't really kind of move into the town because there's not a lot of places. So, right. um, you know, as we all grow older, you know, where is this money going to keep coming from, you know? And I, I just want to, and I know that you're quite aware of it, John, and I, I, we've had conversations like this before, but it's just something I, I feel very important to bring out to everybody to say, look at you know, we, we have to get a handle on this, and, and I don't know what the answer is. But. Kip, no, I agree with you. I just want to make sure that we're that the numbers are. are it's about thirty-four percent. Yeah, I mean, um, you can't you can't use numbers. I like think that. a lot, like what? A lot of it well, is that is thirty-six percent, but that's the, that's what it is. Yeah, but that's over seven years. Seven. Six and a half years, and, and I get it, but I'm just saying that's that's where. It, but because the dollar amounts are so large, when you talk about the two or three percent increase, you're not talking about a couple hundred no, dollars. Now no, you're talking seven or eight hundred, and that's where it, it kind of grows. You know. I know, but when you tell it like it is, it sounds a lot worse. <laughs> no, you do. If five years versus seven years, because it's it's budget year 2013 oh. versus budget year 2019, so that's seven years of budgets then the percentages are truly only like 25 or 26 percent, which is not as bad if you add these percentages up. I'm not going to add the percentages up. That's just the difference. Okay. But if you do it over seven years versus five years, then you have a more realistic percentage. Yeah, it's still... A lot of it is stuff we can't control, like health care, until we change nationally oh, yeah. how we I mean, run this country and what we prioritize. Until we, until we do that. And partly correct. It shows over a seven-year time period a 30.29% increase. And if you take that seven years at 2.5%, that's 17.5%. However, again, on the flip side of it, some of it were being reimbursed as the school resource officer. And in general, if you go back through, I'm turning in about twenty dollars to $40,000 at year end. Um, when you add those numbers in, over the seven years, it's a 4.32% increase. Average average per year mm -hmm. but that's before i subtract off that 20 to 40,000 we turn in on the flip side so 
the numbers are slightly high, absolutely, you're correct. The first, when I became chief, the first six months, I inherited a brand new union and a brand new police contract. And, and you added in, So uh, those you first added the two officer. years were some big jumps. Then you yeah. see what happens is after that initial first two years in 13 and 14, you see a kind of neutralized kip yep. for year three, four. Right. And then all of a sudden you see a jump again for the next contract in the SRO. Right. And now my hope is that we also neutralize again for the next two to three years closer right. to that two and a half or lower. Right. So but my, I get it. I understand overall, what you're saying. My overall thing, John, is not in any way pushing down the police department. I know that. Absolutely. It is strictly of the money. It and is it, this is just one part of it. I know. You're you town-wide. Your thought is town-wide. I get yeah, it. It's, yes, we've had this conversation off camera. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, and it's, it's, and, and, I, can, and, and I, I think you understand what I'm saying. Because the dollar amounts are so much larger, when there is a 2 or 4% increase, that makes it all that much more. So, you know, instead mm -hmm. of our taxes going up 80 or $60, they go up two and three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a year, and you know it, it's not going to take that many years from now when all of us are going to be paying close to ten thousand dollars a year. And I absolutely understand. I'll give you a couple yeah. different perspectives. Number one, my tax bill for right. my house. Granted, I built a beautiful big house is ten thousand two hundred dollars a year. Thirteen percent of my salary comes right back into a brand new house I built. Yep. So I fully understand. I get it. And believe me, I'm well aware of the tax bill out of the federal government where I only can write off part of right. what I contribute now. So it's going to impact me huge. On the flip side, in 1981, we passed Proposition 2.5. The entire western part of the state, all four counties voted against it. I know. Because Proposition 2.5, the economy grows on average over 3% per year. So instantly, we are set up to fail. When the yep. economy grows at 3, 3.8, 4.2%, or this year investors are seeing 18%, your electric rates, they want to go up 11%, and the attorney general is fighting it. All those things impact people out there, and Proposition 2.5 only holds a community for so long when everybody's right. seeing their grocery bills, their electric bills, and everything else jump up 2, 3, 4, 5, 8% per year, and towns are capped at 2.5% because of a 1981 law. Right. And under that 1981 law, it was presented on the floor that every five to 10 years, communities would have to come back and do a proposition two and a half override to reset the budget. Because of that inflation that. above the two and a half percent. When's the last time Deerfield <laughs> reset the budget with a two and a half override? We never, never have. Never. I don't believe in it. Because that's my point. It's a structural problem. So I get it. I see all sides of it. It's a one-time fix for a structural problem, and it's not structural. It's but here's what I, I told Kip earlier this week in my office. We had a great conversation about it. And I said the average homeowner in Deerfield pays $4,000 in taxes a year. That's for fire districts. That's water and the town. $4,000 is the average. But this is two years ago. It may have jumped slightly since because obviously the numbers are going up. When I did an analysis of the police department, 5.89% of the operating budget was going towards the police department. That equated out to about $248 a year to run the police department. I didn't do it for other departments. I didn't do you know, a full analysis like the finance committee should. But what I also told Kip is in the global view, when we look up at the clouds, we have to be very careful when we start reducing budgets. Because when people move to towns and they pay for houses, your house valuation oftentimes is dependent upon how good a schools you have, mm -hmm. yes. how good a services you provide, yes. police, highway, EMS, fire department, do you have water, do you have sewer? If we start reducing that and we start complaining in the newspaper constantly that Deerfield has no taxes or high taxes, or you diminish the value of a house. So if I have you purchase a house for $350,000, and we reduce the tax rate, and services start to fall, and the town value really starts to fall. But I saved you $500 a year in your taxes. Instead of paying $4,000, I saved you $500. You're paying $3,500 a year. What's your house? Over worth? 10 no. years, I saved you $5,000. How much does your house resell for? Right. Did you just lose 5, 15. 10, 
30, $40,000 of valuation in your house mm -hmm. because the town diminishes in capacity. Correct. And, and what Kip and I, and I'm not disagreeing with you. you I told you this face to face, I, I don't disagree. I look at that global view, those clouds and go, how do we make sense of this? Because we cannot diminish services. Right. We cannot just outright reduce yeah. taxes. We cannot diminish our schooling capacity because we have amazing schools because your house values are going to drop on the flip side. So what I save you today, and I look like the angel, you think I'm God, I saved you $500 a year. But when you sell your house, I cost you money. And, and, and I understand what you're saying, but there are communities, our neighbors, that I'm going to go out on a limb. They virtually don't have a police department, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they have... Uh, volunteer fire departments that, you know, they do the best that they can. There's a lot of inequities that they don't, Deerfield has that they don't have. And because of locations or whatever, their homes sell for more money. Mm -hmm. it, it's, 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 a, it's, it's like gambling almost, mm -hmm. you know. I've built homes in different communities and, you know, they sell, the exact same homes sell for different prices. And you're exactly right. Homes in some communities sell better because they have better schools, and that usually is the biggest draw. Uh, but there's all kinds of things that affect that. You know, and I, my, my whole point through this is that, you know, when I talk about being careful with how we spend money, it isn't that I'm looking for a $500 tax reduction. I just don't want a $500 increase every year. Because, as you said, if you take your scenario and what you're doing, I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to guess that within 20 years, you're going to be retired. Your taxes are going to be almost two and a half times what they are now. And you look at what you're going to get for retirement, that could take up half of your retirement. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be saying, oh, you know, say to your wife, look at this isn't, this isn't for us anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what? We got a oh, lot to go Belgium through, to so oh, we can't. I know, I, I'm sure you have something to say, thanks. Jeff, but I'm, I'm going <laughs> to. Moving on, because okay. you know what? We could be here till midnight yep. discussing the same stuff. Oh, it's, so it's only 7 o'clock. I, I, um, We've been here till midnight before, Tom. I know, you know, actually, we agree on a lot of stuff. So I, I just, I, I think it's we're good. all... I agree with you now. We can move on. Okay. <laughs> hey, isn't this looking nice? Sorry, dude. Here. It is. I need something <laughs> to drink. <laughs> you said John was going to be quick. He is. <laughs> like but I said, you I haven't think, gotten to me yet. I, so. think, I think we're all trying to be on the same page. We are. Being sustained. Sustainable and, um, and we care. So, John, your 2.74% increase. I um, is there any discussion on that? I mean, this is preliminary. The, this is not. Yeah. The only question I had was the um, cruiser repair it seems to have jumped, and I just wondered if you were anticipating more stuff, or you're shifting more things, or no, seeing I, more expense in that. Yeah, that's a great question. What I did is this year before I submitted my budget, I went back and I reviewed what we were spending for the last two years of turn-ins with Brenda. I had her do year-end printouts for 16 and 17 before I submitted eight or 19's request, okay. and I shifted money around where it Saw actually that. was being expended. Right. So it, it was a more fair and accurate budget. I saw where you. Yeah. So you see some, some areas are and you added some. That's yes. Why. Exactly. Okay. That's why every Th couple years better. I like to do that, but I like to do it over a two to three year time period. It's good. Yeah. Well, it is. It is good to trend and and. I was just on the gas. Were you anticipating sort of stable gas prices or? or That's I mean, what I'm anticipating. Okay. So we're spending about two thousand to twenty one hundred dollars a month right now. So the um, so the twenty four thousand dollar reduction is based on stable rates, not yes. reduced rates. Yes. Okay. I just you know I I, I don't nervous. I don't think there's it's going to be. I mean it might go down a few pennies, but I think it's going to be. You know we're not going to go real low. I I don't know. We're, that brings me to another thing, I, and you, I'm a bit foggy and really new at this, so I don't know who and or what. And I've talked with John in the past about getting a, a, a vehicle, a cruiser, if you will, that would, could be used as a general cruiser, but also could be used mostly for you know, road details when the car is just sitting there, so it doesn't <clears> have to run all the time. We recently were discussing something about green communities, 
and we were kind of down on the totem pole because we go through so much gasoline. Actually, that was fixed just so you oh, know. Oh, we were just fixing that. Oh. That was um, fixed. We're okay. only down a half a percent. Okay. Um, Kevin, just, can you, you just, know. why don't you just say just that? Just a real quick one. Yeah. What, what they did was is the information that Pat Smith had, she took the whole number. She did not take out South County EMS. I explained to her that we only okay. were responsible for 53% of South County EMS. So she needed to reduce those numbers. And when she did, the final number she came out with was is we were a half a percent off. So we were supposed to be at 20% over that seven year period and we we're at 19.5%. So we're still gonna be, uh, we're gonna be eligible, eligible okay. for all of the all right. grants because we are so close. Okay. Yeah, they're not gonna give us a hard time on that. All right, well, but that led me, I was, that, I that's my little, sure. Pet thing. I, I, I would love to see a, a cruiser on the side of a road detail that's not running with the LED light bulbs. They use mm -hmm. almost no electricity. Um, you know, and if you, I don't know, how can I say this? If we end up keeping the motorcycle, maybe even something that was on the back of the motorcycle that kind of opened up and that motorcycle sat there mm -hmm. during a, the, mm -hmm. a detail with all the lights flashing and stuff like that. I, I, would, I would really, I think that would be a, a good addition to the mm -hmm. department. You know. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. My struggle with it is number one, police vehicles are exempt under green communities. Number two, the Ford Interceptor utilities, people call them explorers. They are mm -hmm. not a Ford Explorer. They are built on the Ford Taurus chassis. They're an entirely different vehicle. They're actually an Interceptor vehicle. Are certified for green communities. Green communities, you have to have a combined ratio of 18% miles per gallon city and 20 on highway, they fit the build. That is their okay. exact number. So number no, one, no, they are in that. compliance. I didn't realize that. Yes, they are in compliance, but number two, they're exempt. Number three, I wrestle with- Because we have no more Crown Vicks, right? We're all- we, Our last Crown Vic is at highway, it's stripped, we just need to auction it or okay. destroy so, okay, it. Okay, so does Pat doesn't know that either. No, I, it literally was stripped like six weeks ago. We need to, uh, okay. it's off oh, the records. It doesn't matter because we now are certified. I mean, they, they'll mm -hmm. give us a certification because we're so close. But No, the energy committee knows. It's been oh, pulled oh, off okay. the books. Oh, okay. Yes, it has. They emailed right. me about two, two and a half weeks ago asking for all of our vehicles, and I got back to them in hours. Okay. Great. So they have all of our accurate right. vehicles on the books. But my concern was I'd love to buy some type of hybrid vehicle, and we actually discussed it with Dick's vehicle of what to do, but I don't want to just purchase a $30,000 hybrid vehicle to so feel much. good and to park it on the side of the road and, work, and put blue lights on it because you're never going to get your value back out of it. It's going to make me feel good because I'm saving the environment, I'm saving gas, but yet I just spent $30,000 of taxation on this vehicle. No, but what I think where I was coming with stuff like that is that, uh, you know, in here I'm going to make an assumption, which I don't like to do, but... There are probably evenings that you're well aware of in town that aren't normally busy for police. I'm crazy, but they're, they're out there doing patrols. They do a traffic stop, stuff like that. And I'm going to believe that most of your traffic stops don't involve a high-speed chase. The people see the blue lights and they pull over. So you, you could use a, an electric vehicle or hybrid vehicle that would be on road details. I know you don't have road details every day, but it could be used at well, night. We pretty much do. All right, but it could be but used in the mm -hmm. evenings or on weekends or Sunday mornings driving around and stuff like that. Just the problem is, is the hy hybrid vehicles are, number one, they're not pursuit rated. Well, I, I get that. but that's So why again, we're getting back into a liability. I'm sticking a motorcycle out there that's not a motorcycle. It's actually a hybrid vehicle to feel better about the police department, but yet as soon as one of my guys cracks that vehicle up, he's going to point a finger at me or she's going to point a finger at me and say, you put me in a vehicle to do police work that is not a certified vehicle. And it is not a pursuit is? rated vehicle. And a motorcycle is? They are. Yeah. Seriously? Yes. Wow. So. I take my chances in a Prius. <laughs> with that said, you don't drive like we do. I, I don't send you. Yeah. And you can have I, a domestic on yeah. a Saturday morning with residual alcohol. Yeah. And you're like, it is a perfectly quiet morning. I have my coffee. Yeah. I am at the dump. Are you kidding me? My day just went to heck yeah. because now I am flying on this call. That's police work. You go from zero to 100% yeah. in a flash of a second. And there's no rhyme or reason. There's no, oh, hey, let's run the numbers and it's Tuesday nights. So I wish it was easy. I wish I could just comply and say, you know what? Yeah, we can integrate that. 
I have six people per shift, and guess what? One person I can stick in a hybrid vehicle because it would make me feel better. I'm all about the environment. I just, I wrestle how to integrate it and how to do it in a cost-effective manner that's safety-wise. Because if I put that same vehicle in a motor vehicle stop situation where it's catching up to a car and it's passing around other cars, weaving in and out of traffic trying to catch that first vehicle in the line that just passed a line of cars near Savages and it's coming through the S corners and it's clicking in and out of electric versus gas, I can't have or allow any delay of power. I can allow for zero delay of power, whether it's one second or two seconds. Because as an avid motorcycle rider, you know, with the sway factor and the inertia on a vehicle, it makes a difference when I lay my foot into that gas and I regain the inertia on that vehicle back to a neutral point. So to power a hybrid vehicle as a primary response cruiser is not a good idea. It is literally putting us in an awkward position. You know, I, I don't think that it, the transfer of power is, is instantaneous. It, that wouldn't be the thing. Have you We're, done it at 70, up 5, and 10, passing three cars in a no-passing zone? No, but I've driven them enough that it, it, the, the power difference is, is not there. The car is not going to handle, a Prius is not going to handle like your cruiser is. I understand that, and, and I get that whole point. And I also can appreciate how the situations change in a heartbeat. Um, Last Saturday morning, a worker's late to a job construction site, we will say in Old Deerfield. There's not many of them up there, but I will not name the site. Yep. Stopped passing the old she shop. It's a 40 mile an hour zone, right? Yep. 89 miles per hour. Wow. 49 miles an hour over the speed limit. Just late going to work. I, it, it, that's reality. It's 7.07 in the morning. My day shift literally flew out of the building at 10 minutes to 7, flew up to Old Deerfield and alarms, coming back on 5 and 10 and goes, what is this? Here it comes around the corner almost on two wheels. There's no rhyme or reason. It's... So I agree with you. I'm all about the community. I wrestle about cost, and I also wrestle with effectiveness. There's nothing more I would like than to have an old highway vehicle or building inspector vehicle that I could put blue lights in the back and run it on a traffic detail six hours of the day and it finally decides to start up and recharge the batteries, I would love it because the first 100,000 miles were put on by a different department. That's cost effective to me. I can't go out and, and purchase a $30,000 car just to do that. That's not beneficial to me. All right. Moving on. Did you have yep. any other questions? Nope, I'm good. Okay. Thank you, John. You're Thank welcome. you, John. I don't think I have any questions. No, no, no. Um, Ask away, please. No, I don't. I, I'm I, not opposed to any ideas. We're ah, good. No, we're good. So thanks. You want to stick around for a couple of minutes? I don't know. In There's case. no other questions about expenses, animal control, payroll, nothing? You good? You're good. The, You're only, good. the only thing I can add, the animal control increase is, is an estimate on the insurance. Most of the cost mm -hmm. is related to the estimate that. of the... Increase to the insurance. Yeah, they were in a contract negotiation year, so you did see a little bit of a jump there. But what we also added in was the first like three or four years that the sheriff's department did the regional kennel was free. And about two years ago, I started receiving a seven or eight hundred dollar bill a year to participate in it. And it wasn't budget, budgeted under the animal control budget, so I just ate it out of the general police expenses. And Brenda finally caught it this year, and she goes, "Don't you want to switch that and put that in there?" Mm -hmm. So there is a line in there for the animal control officer for that as well. Uh, yeah. You see it down bottom, plus dog control fee for yep. the $1,000. Yep. Well, yeah. And that's well, for the sheriff's department regional kennel. Yeah. We, we haven't, we, I think this is a year that we have to, I'm the person, but I haven't gotten any meeting notices. We renegotiate that as well, what the fee is. So putting in 1000 is good because, you know, I don't know what we're going to renegotiate as a group. It's because it's not it's not all 26 towns. I think there's 13 of us or 15 of us. I don't know how many participate. Yeah. You know yeah. better than I do. I don't know. It's been a couple of years. It's like a three year cycle. So I and think it the state fund the entire sheriff's department. Anyways, the dog thing is separate. 
I mean, right. they pay for most of it, actually. I, I mean, don't know if this is wicked. for building maintenance or. No, no, no. It's for, um, uh, you know, it's just, it's miscellaneous. Uh, I don't want to say miscellaneous. It's for cost of the operation. They, they, the inmates um, do all the work. Mm -hmm. And most of the stuff is donated. Mm -hmm. You know, they get dog food donated, and then they have volunteers that come in or donate. But there's actually, they have staff, and, and this is a, sort of a partial share. They're, they're partially paid for by the state, but they're also, this is sort of a shared. Well, if expense. you have 13 towns contributing $700 yeah. a piece, I get it. That's just an offset of yeah, a budget. It's, that's it's that's a small 10 amount. grand to maintain and, shots and, and dog food and. Yeah, it's Heat just, and electric clean or whatever stuff. it may be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's for some of the costs. It's 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 an offset of some sort. I just had one one question on the um, the cruiser. Um, it seems the request has been the same since 2015. And are you anticipating if you're going to get every another? year they go they go they, up with it? But I would think, but we're still at that. Ceiling. I try and hold it down. Yeah. With transferring other equipment out, and now that we actually have all the utilities now we're transferring stuff out of the old utilities so it's okay. kind of offset okay yeah they, they have wondering. jumped about three thousand dollars yeah but we're transferring the cages and the consoles over to save that three grand gotcha so i'm trying to keep so at it some down. point it's going to go up i just yeah. hadn't seen any rise in that many years i just wondered where the you were... average is about thirty nine thousand to fifty thousand is what towns budget for it okay yeah all right sounds good uh, like or similar to the EMS in their budget, we get to see uh, monies that was generated. Where are the monies generated from the police department for traffic details and whatever citations and stuff like they that? They all go in uh, to the general fund, mm -hmm. and Brenda tracks all that, and she actually prints it out in the annual town report every year. So you can go through there and you can see all those associated court costs, traffic details, the 10% administration fee. The book's right up there. Okay. On the you know the biggest money maker, the way station. The way station. The a way station. State police, all half of the fine money, goes to comes us. to the town. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Hundreds of thousands. We need to put in another towards one. public safety. We get to. I know when they're open too, because all the trucks go down Route Five. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We need to put one all on right, Route guys. Five, then we get one hundred percent of it. Listen. We're, we're yeah, you want to go? All right. Poor Kevin's got to get out of here. Oh, yeah. his, I can hear his stomach going from now. How many hours do we talk about mosquitoes? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk mosquitoes? Not with Kevin here. I'm ready. Okay. I haven't seen any. Not with Kevin. <laughs> they all went south. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> You're welcome. It's good John. to see you again. You're welcome. Okay, Kevin. You poor thing. I'm sorry to keep you. Okay. Do you have any updates for us? Oh, right. I know. The Stillwater Bridge. Can you... Tell us about the Stillwater Bridge. Yeah, actually, uh, a week, week and a half ago, I met with um, multiple people from Mass DOT. Uh, there was quite a few people that came in from Boston, um, plus obviously District 2 that was there. We were looking at the different concepts of what they were looking at trying to do, and originally they were like, well, you know, probably the easiest thing to do here is just going to be probably go ahead and shut it down and, you know, redo mm -hmm. it. And we were like, uh, that's not an option. You know, we discussed what happened when the bridge did get closed because of the repairs that need to be done. Um, there was two trees. I mean, the chances of this happening again are probably high because of their tree issues in town. But two trees came down, one on upper road, one on lower road, and we had 52 um, residents that had no fire, police, or EMS um, protection whatsoever. So that was one of the driving forces that allowed us to move so quickly to get the repair done originally. So the long and the short is, is, is they're not going to go ahead and um, they're not going to shut it down. What they're going to do is they're going to keep one lane open. It'll be run by a traffic light. So the theory is, is they're going to put it out to bid in 2022. They'll award it in 2023, and it should be done sometime around 2025, anticipation of um, that construction. A couple of questions that came into play was... Uh, an anti-jump fence mm -hmm. um, and I did a quick little call around we pretty much decided that you know we've had better than six and a half years before we since we've had to pull anybody out of the water from jumping off the bridge um, trying to keep our, our country look um, mm -hmm. it just didn't seem very feasible right um, the other thing that that they asked about was street lights because <clears throat> originally I believe there was a street light at the end of the south end of the bridge 
um, which was taken out during the energy savings. We tried to do all kinds of things. Time. Yeah, I know. So anyway, long story short is, is they well, no, asked that if there was going to be that got taken out by the by one of our events, and then we never replaced it. Right. So one of the so what they asked is, you know, do you want lights back up there? I was like, well, yeah, I certainly would love it. Would love a light. Um, and I went into, you know, Kip and I discussed this briefly, and and I explained that to them that, you know, yeah, we'd really like a light. Yeah, we'd really like it to be LED, and yeah, we'd really like the state to pay for it. We don't want to pay for it. We'll pay for the electricity once it's up, but we don't want it. We want this part of the project. So I don't know how that's going to play out because, you know, we don't even have 25% um, uh, construction design yet, yep. but at least the thought was put out to them immediately that, yeah, we, we would like a light, and no, we don't want to pay for it. So, I mean, there should be no reason why they can't just bury that into the, uh, into the yeah. project. Kevin, can I just say thank you so much as someone from West Deerfield. It, a 14-mile round trip changes to a 22-mile round trip for me. It's worse for other people. And really, thank you so much for advocating for us. No, we, definitely, we, we talked about it a little bit, and I just told him flat up. I said, it, it just can't happen. Well, There's school just buses, no way. I mean, it's just EMS. Exactly. Huge School buses, EMS, fire. EMS, fire. Oh, my gosh, it's just one Snow thing plowing, I, yeah. sanding. You know, mm -hmm. it just was taking everything and turning it into a living nightmare. So it's like, I said, yep. you know, whatever Thank we you. can do, I'm going to say no to. So. Well, I just want you to know, I think you're wonderful. Thank you so much. That was huge. Um, the other thing is, is uh, the Cumberland Farms, they're starting work over there. Mm -hmm. And we were approached by the company that's doing the, the stripping there if we would be interested in the loan. And I was like, well, free loan? Sure, I'd love some free loan. And he says, yeah, but you're going to have to haul it. I was like, that's fine. So we pulled in about 356 yards of loam today and going at a price of ballpark about $26 a yard, uh, we got just over $9,000 worth of loam today. Nice. Um, hopefully we're going to go ahead and be able to do the same thing again tomorrow. This is not going to be nice, really good stuff like we've gotten in the past from different, from like DA or other places. This is probably going to end up having to be screened. But it's still, it's, it's mm -hmm. good, viable stuff. It's not garbage. So I was ecstatically happy we were able to do that. So. Great. Oh, that's wonderful savings for projects in the summer. But what I really like to do is I really like to, to thank the guys. You know, um, mm. this weekend, you know, they were out Friday, Saturday, yeah. Sunday, Monday. It was you know, wonderful. It's our job, and I understand that. Yeah. But, you know, they, they went above and beyond. You know, it was like they went home for a few hours and they came back in. And they went home for a few more hours and they came back in. It was just because of how the storm laid out. So, uh, you know, definitely kudos to the guys. You yeah. know, they, they, they pulled it together and made it happen. So I was very, very happy with their work. Absolutely, Kevin. Great I just want to make sure that you know that we are so appreciative. Mm -hmm. It was really wonderful. I had all my kids coming home, and everybody got home safe and left safe. And so I just want to thank everybody from thank town you. for that. So thank you. So which one do you want to start on? Do you, got, do you guys have questions? Yeah. Okay. Shoot. Go ahead. Um, as, as far as the salaries go, I all right. Which 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 one you want? I'm please. on the highway department salaries. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me um, dig it because I got, like with, I said, I got seven yeah, seven okay. budgets here. So bear with me. Okay. Go ahead. Um, is the overall salary budget <clears throat> reflective of a two percent cost of living raise, or was that a step? This, my understanding is, is the way it was put, this, this was pretty much generated for me. Yep. And it was generated under the assumption because my understanding is you guys are going to be end up talking about this. For budgetary reasons, this was put in as a step raise and a 2%. For both. For both. Oh, okay. We haven't discussed it. Because you guys haven't figured that out yet. So okay. quite honestly, as far as the highway salaries and as far as wastewater treatment salaries, I really can't speak to it because I need to know what your decisions are going to be before I can move forward with our actual numbers. Gotcha. That, it, with the same thing, like I was speaking to John about, in that same uh, six and a half year uh, period, this one was a 12% increase. But I realized that this one, unlike the police, is was a negotiated contract, and, and this one, I, I thought that's what you had put in there, but I wasn't sure that's why yeah. I asked. Right, yeah, that, yeah. Is, that is correct. Because okay. like I said, this, this was pre-generated for me. Basically, um, both of my salary budgets here for wastewater treatment and highway was 
generated by Brenda. Yeah, with the step in the 2%. Over seven years, you're only at 12%? Yeah, that's with both raises. It's yeah, actually I mean, impressive. We don't know which way right. it's going to go, but we haven't mm -hmm. spoken to that. Um, that's right. well. Do you guys yeah. have any questions about that salary? No. No, No, because no, we have to figure out what we're... I mean, I wanted... It was just easier to do both and to see what, what the expenses were and then to figure out what we're going to do. Because we have 1.7% I mean, per be year. That's impressive. Yeah. But 12% over seven years is, you know, whatever. Um, it's pretty reasonable. If I could, one thing before we really get too deep into all of ours, and because I don't want to be going on the, the assumption on John's theory that, you know, if, if we lower these too much, we're going to be... Uh, I've had the opportunity to have this position for about two and a half years. And it's taken me a little bit to try and get a good grasp on where we're at with our monies. Um, I have added in working with Brenda, I've been able to add in a lot of line items. Mm -hmm. So that way, like John says, I'm actually be able to see where my money is being spent. So that way, I've got a good handle on where we're at now. And pretty much, I think just about every budget I have has gone down. I'm not looking for an increase pretty much anywhere. So, but it's it's because I've just had the opportunity to go ahead, look where we're at, look where we've been spending our money, look to see where we can save our money, look where we can be more efficient and effective. And I think with all of those being said, that will definitely be reflected in my budgets this year. And Kevin, that's yeah, good. really what we're looking for. That's the key. Yep. Without affecting services uh, at this the only, time. The only thing, um, the thing that Kip had brought up is that what was Which the money? Which one you want? Uh, this is a tree work on the highway expense. Okay, yeah. That there's quite a, uh, you've only used about 14% of this year's budget. Yeah, you know, when, when it comes to, and, and I don't mean to be rude, but how I spend my money, I am conservative. Mm -hmm. I try to make sure that I have available money for when things happen. This time of year, we have an extensive amount of trees coming down at this point. So the theory of, well, you know what? Well, you know, you know, you know you've got $10,000, you've got $12,000, so you're going to spend $1,000 a month. That's not how it works right. in my world. My world is I look at what I've got, what I'm expecting. Do I have weather coming in? Wintertime, I'm going to have a lot more stuff. Springtime, am I going to have a lot of excessive water? The excessive water makes the ground saturated. Ground saturates, the trees fall over. Yep. So this is why I deal with our tree budget the way that we do it. I do the very similar to just about all of mine, is I hold back to make sure that we're not going to have any issues. And sometimes that is why it's going to reflect within here where I've been able to go ahead and make some of my deductions right. or my, my well, yeah, deductions. What the discussion was, was we, you know, we did the inventory of the cemeteries and there's about 20 trees that probably need to be taken down right. so they create no damage to the cemeteries or minimal damage to the cemeteries over time. And we estimated about $1,000 a tree. So it's like $20,000 more one time thing. And I don't know, I mean, I was thinking of initially putting it under the selectman's budget as a mm -hmm. one-time expense so it doesn't increase yours because yours, your budget is, you know, 3% under almost right. um, from what you did last year. So if, if we put the 20%, I mean 20000 in your tree budget and go from the 32 to the 52, mm -hmm. I, I didn't know how you felt about that. Um, and or and and Jeff, how would you see that as a finance committee? Do you want to see that under the selectman's budget, or I mean, I don't want Kevin's budget to be penalized for this sort of one-shot deal. How, how or, do you want us to deal? A, can it be a line item separate on, under the tree budget? You or know, a subset, a, a, or maybe a that's subset a of the tree budget, so that you could say this is a you know a, mm. every one. ten years or every seven years you go through and you clean up some excess stuff other than your annual right. trees coming down right. and Because one, one of the problems I'm running into very specifically over at uh, uh, the Sugarloaf Street one is because of the size of the trees and because of the area where it is, we're going to we, we gotta bring in a crane. It's expensive. That, one, that one's going to be piece. about eight grand to take down those two uh -huh. trees, about yeah. four grand a piece. Really? 
Yeah, because they're going to have to set up the crane in Fisher's garage on their, their back parking lot yep. because otherwise we'd be taking up all of Sugarloaf Street. Right. Um, I've already talked with, with Frank over at Fisher's. Yeah. Um, he says when the time comes, he says, yeah, certainly no problem. You know, definitely give them enough notice that right. uh, well, it's going to be happening. But I don't want to interrupt, but when you get to those types of numbers, could you call multiple trees? Oh, that is multiple. That is because what I did was I got in touch with uh, the newer place in Hadley. Um, I can't think of the name of them. Cotton mm -hmm. Tree Service, um, Jim's Tree Service. Um, we've got in touch with the people in Vermont. I can't remember the name off off the top of my head. Um, and those numbers, anytime, anytime I'm spending anything more than like three grand, yeah. I'm getting at least three quotes on everything, yeah, so you how know, many because trees are over there, though? Two, I'm sorry, two how large. many trees, just two, there's two, but they're huge. And what the problem is, is because of how they are, you're going to have to have climbers go up there and time off a little piece at a time. Because right. if you take anything more than a small branch and we're talking small branch size of my thumb comes down and hits one of those, um, headstones Ancient. that are. Sweet. hundred and some odd years old you know they're they're going to crack they're going to shatter or, or and that's the whole idea my understanding was taking down the trees was to observe um the history of those headstones mm. well yeah I, I i'll talk with you later but i i had four huge trees that had to be craned down and it was really only 3700 bucks cool bring them on for two days so yeah yeah no i, I i'll take whoever i'm not fitting some of them yeah. Oh, Great. Okay. Well, we'll Is look that around. the Klaus, 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 brothers? Mm -hmm. No, because they just bought a brand new crane. Is that the one you're talking about? No. All right. Um, well, anyway. Right. But, well, right. but so I was just. How, how do we want to? Does that maybe Jeff? Does that make sense, Jeff, to put it as a subset wanna, of that? I, I think it makes sense. Exactly. That, it's in a little flexibility. Right. He knows, he knows the schedule and what needs to be done. Yep. And so this is a one. I don't. I don't. I don't get your thought behind this. So instead of well, increasing his tree budget because we know we have more trees, you want to just appropriate money for a one-time. Well, because this is this is not because nothing's been done for years and years. I mean, the last I would do time it as a special warrant article, so it sits there for years encumbered. If he doesn't get to all the trees in one year, or there's some identified, or to you know, find high. a great company that keeps recommending that's low in cost but can only do so many, mm -hmm. and you're right. playing with fiscal years, a yeah. special warrant article, this that is, money sits there. That might be a better idea. I, 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 that all skewed when I, after the first year that I think I was elected, I mean, we have 14 cemeteries, so I, I couldn't believe it when I found out about that. So I, I visited them, you know, but. It, I didn't really, wasn't paying attention to the trees, so, and I hadn't been back, and we were doing an inventory, and we were supposed to do, you know, for the Capital Improvement mm -hmm. Committee, so we did an inventory of the cemeteries, and Kevin mm -hmm. was um, pointing out trees that needed to, um, you know, or he thought there'd pre probably be 20 trees that we have to do in this, of the cemeteries, right. and that we haven't done anything, and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, here we are putting in Fixing up fences and You're right, and to have and, a tree and, come and, and take them all out, be horrible. Other headstones that would get damaged and stuff like that. So, can I ask article, an uneducated question? Sure. Can you use CPA money since we have some pretty decent amount of funding there? I'm because not sure because that's maintenance. It's not replace. You know, I don't know because no, the fences is maintenance. Commu community preservation, and if we don't remove, we're re by removing the trees, we're preserving the cemetery. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. It might be, you know, we, we maybe some people it. look into it because, I, I mean, down, that's right? no different than replacing right. the fences mm -hmm. because we're using CPA money to replace fences. Right. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, it's I mean, because instead of using taxpayer, um, you know, we're having some full of the state. Taxpayer right. Yes. yes. You get full tax. We're using the state. state match on some are of that stuff. particular trees we speak of in, around the cemeteries, are they... Dead or are they just large trees? Well, they're dead. I mean, uh, well, what we did end some up of having them are dead. Some of them are just overgrown. Just yeah. overgrown. But I mean, we we did end up having to take one because three quarters of the tree broke um, on Pine Nook one, and we ended up having to take that one out completely. Would, um, if you go ahead and you look at the one right very uh, close to Carolyn's, um, that one there is it, that's bad. I mean, it's a big tree. It's an old tree. I really hate to see it go. But I mean, this thing's dropping branches that are yeah. six inches, eight yeah. inches in diameter. I would mean, we look at uh, replacing any of these when we, w I mean, 
No, that would be completely up to. Would up we want to, the, to pop in a tree here and there for, to keep the aesthetics of the of the cemetery in our hmm. historic area? Well, if that complies with the CPA money, absolutely. Right. Ex right. You, this used to be a tree. That what's happened because of we've had so many. We're trying to catch up, and and again mm -hmm. that goes back to a budget year when after the economy crash that we cut the tree budget completely and we haven't really recovered from that and we've been playing catch up and there's just more and more stuff so it's anyway. just always nice to separate it on its own warrant article when it's mm -hmm. a one-time expenditure yeah right. I think the residents really buy into it they right understand that oh hey this isn't gonna be snuck in next well, year I, on us right I, I want and also for to be Ke Ke Kevin's budget he's reducing his budget by almost three percent so be reflected. so it's, he I don't want to penalize him by adding in this huge expense after him going with sitting with Brenda and going over every single line mm -hmm. item to say what's my true expense Absolutely. what's the trend on our expense line I mean he put a lot of hours into mm -hmm. this and I, I didn't want to skew it by p throwing back in 20,000 but it, right. it's something that we have to do and it was something that, you know, I've been neglectful. You know, we, we were forced to revisit or look at the cemeteries, and it was like, oh, my gosh, this is a serious mm -hmm. issue. So, yeah, yeah, it cost us in the long yeah. run. After I mean, so I don't, want it, I don't want the budget year to go by, even though we're having, you know, we have expenses. I think it's, this is a hugely important thing to address. But, but I if also you don't identified want to, that you wanted to do yeah. 5000 more per year and you wanted to do a 10-year catch-up, then you fold it into a line item. Well, that was why I, we increased the Kevin's budget from 22,000. We were doing 22,000. And we last year we jumped it, or two years ago we jumped up 36 to do catch up. And then we've been maintaining, or we went to 32 last year and we're doing 32 again. But this this is over and above the, tr you know, a, a catch up. Our normal amount. thing. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. spent 33,500 last year. Yeah, Montrose. well, we're trying to do the trending, and right. I think that the trending, we're still trying to catch up. Right, right. What I'm just getting at is, is I had to steal from Peter to pay Paul because right. I overspent that I know. Right. budget. But, but it's close. Right. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah, no doubt. I mean, I mean, there was still lots we could be doing, but again, knowing how much money that we had, this is as far as we went with it. Right. And if we had a situation like Conway did with a tornado, I mean, it would blow the whole budget by a lot. So, God. you know, you, you just... You can do the best you can. So, um, did you have any other questions, Kip? Yeah, I, I wanted to kind of go over this. If you sure, don't mind. go ahead. Um, I guess I'll start right at the top of the highway uh, expenses. Kip. Yep, sure. First thing is, there's $5,400 for a clothing allowance. How is that money spent? The money is spent on each of the guys get 200 bucks, and um, basically that takes care of their boots and any other small garb that they may want. And then the rest of it is our uniforms. We get jeans and we get shirts. Well, we, have, you, we, have, we have a contract with um, Unifirst. This is a standard procedure. You go to almost any town, Conway, Waitley, Leiden, Shelburne, um, any of the hill towns, people have uniforms. Kevin, are they all reflective? I mean, we're buying safety reflective colors. No, sure. no, they are not. They're regular jeans, and they're in their. Oh, I'm not talking about the jeans. I'm talking about the shirts. The shirts, yeah. They we have the we have all the the orange okay. or the lime green shirts. I just wanted to make sure we were having that um, safety. But effect. to go on, but to go ahead along with that, we also everyone when they're out on the road, they're supposed to be wearing their their tearaway uh, vests mm -hmm. because the vests have. Because these right here don't actually qualify. Mm -hmm. They're not reflective. They're not reflective. No, but uh, underneath I, highway safety. I guess I was more concerned because, I mean, again, anybody can buy those colors, but it sort of identifies our people to townspeople that you're legit, All right. you know, highway guys. And I think it just makes it look, it makes well, it all no, look a you lot do more look, professional. And that saves from. Compared to the ripped jeans and. Well, well and it also saves is, from inappropriate um, t shirts. I mean, I. I I'm sorry. I think it does look much better and professional. But I've seen. The I've only one is safety stuff. Well, I, I, you know, like I said, six years ago, this didn't even exist. So the town did without it for, you know, seventy something years, and all of a sudden now it went from two thousand up to fifty four hundred. But again, yeah. also keep in the back of your mind that these numbers over here, fourteen, fifteen, yep. those numbers right there cannot accurately reflect what was spent in each one of those. You would actually have to go to see Brenda and see which of these line items 
were actually spent. Because again, back in the other days, and I'm not trying to throw rocks at anyone, but they just kind of said, here's my line items. Mm -hmm. And so you know what? I'm only going to spend maybe uh, $200 here, but I'm going to spend $5,000 there. But as long as the bottom line doesn't exceed what I was given, whatever. So that's why I've been trying to actually give you true numbers. So the cl clothing allowance in the past, you know, the 4,000, 4,800, the 5,200, I'm showing you actual expenses compared to numbers that were skewed in the past. I, cannot, I right. cannot speak to those because I was not in charge at that point in time, but I can tell you those numbers do not accurately reflect what was done. That's why we added the, in the numbers. That is why we are able to go ahead and look at this. And that is why I've been able to go ahead, look at my numbers, see where, the, see where my stuff is actually being spent, see where I can make my savings. And that's why I'm able to save $7,000 this year. I'm going down 2.89%. I'm not asking for an increase. So. But your clothing allowance, I correct me if I'm wrong, is so your employees are not taking home jeans and shirts with oil grease, tar on them, and washing them in their own washing machines. And sewers, sewage stuff, when we have to go in the sewers. So um, that's the purpose and the background behind it. Were they doing that years ago? No. I guess what my concern is is that if I look at the police budget, they spend $7,200 for an actual uniform, and the highway department spends $5,400, and I don't hardly ever see people in uniforms. Uh, I see the shirt that you're wearing, and I do see some mm -hmm. people with T-shirts with our logo or mm -hmm. a sweatshirt. Right. But, you know, I, I don't see that. And, I mean, in the construction world, you get messy and you get dirty. Mm -hmm. I, I see that. I, I just don't – I think that it's a lot of money, and I guess I'm looking at it as we're just subsidizing clothing for the highway department so they don't get dirty clothes. I don't know yeah. how to respond to that. To I know, I know. That. Well, I, I mean, that's just my point. And if, and if the, the board uh, feels that they, it's appropriate, then, and then that's, that's that. But, uh, you know, how much, how much, talking about sewer, how much do we give the sewer department for their clothing allowance? Basically, those guys are getting two, two, basically, I think they're getting 250 a person. How much is this? How much does this break down to a person? But also keep in the back of your mind when these guys are doing their things, they're not. Uh, they're not into the ditches. They're not into replacing the um, the services. The boots um, that you get are the they're the safety toe right. ones, right? Right. They have to be the safety oh, okay. toe shoes. See, I, I mean, honestly, my feeling is if it's a safety issue, and that's only getting three guys, people, like eight. getting pe people the boots so they don't have foot injuries or get hurt keeps them not from taking time off and not having our impact on our insurance and and they're and they're and they're healthy i mean mm -hmm. so I, for 35 I don't mind. years i've been buying sneakers that have steel toes in them for the exact same reason i'm not arguing that oh. i'm just oh, where does a burden lie i mean where where you know well, I mean, if you I mean, just want to keep doing related. this, it's fine. You can say, well, I don't well, want to I do think, it. Well, I think, you know, boots are legitimate because I don't, I don't want people to get hurt. But and we all go to work and we all buy boots or whatever, and you buy boots that are appropriate for me. Well, I, I go to work in construction. I'm not going to go buy cowboy boots with pointed toes on them. But yet I know people who ride horses for a living, and they're not going to buy steel tip shoes. That's my only point. No, I'm not. Okay, we can move on. The, the electric bill is $13,000, and I'm concerned about that. Yeah, that's something that. that both you and I discussed today. Yeah. We're, we need to... You, you were talking about a good idea. What was your idea? Well, that, that's, I'll talk about later. Um, I looked... I had Brenda pull that electric bill, and the electric bill seems like it's been... It's pretty consistent. There aren't many spikes up and down. I thought I was going to see in the summertime, you know, maybe the AC units were driving electric bills, but it's not really showing that because... The electric bill is the highest in January, or it was last year, mm -hmm. as all the other ones. So I'm not really sure exactly how and or why. I, I, I thought you said that it was because of the welding and that we should get a no, separate no, no, welding no. unit. Oh, no, what I, was, what I said is that possibly the welder will cause a spike in the demand. So when the demand rate goes up, the power company says Church whatever the number is, they, they always make sure that that amount of electricity is available to you, so they charge you a higher rate for everything. If 
we might only use a welder once a week, let's just say. So all week long, we're going to be paying a higher demand rate. I mean, if you want to get mm -hmm. what I was going to say to that point is we have a generator over there. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't run that often. Would, is it a big deal to switch it, like when the power goes off? No. Turn it on? No. So he's suggesting every time we run the load. The no, not every time. What, what I'm suggesting is maybe once a week, we'll pick a day and, and run the generator for a little bit. You do two things. One is you keep the thing running. It's probably mm -hmm. got no time on it at all. Right. Well, it does run once. It d runs once a week for its general testing. But just a quick question for sure. you just before we get too deep into that. Sure. So my, I thought the demand was for the entire month and not just a week. So in other words, if I, if yes. I, so if, so if I used the welder on January 1st, right. then I'm charged that higher rate the entire month, month of January. Correct. So, so either I'm going to use a generator all the time when I use the welder? No, you don't have the to welder. because it's not going to change. I'll, my only suggestion for that, Kevin, was to do two things. One is mm -hmm. you get free electricity for that, you know, six hour day while you're there mm -hmm. plus you're exercising the generator because mm -hmm. it, it, it virtually gets no use and, sure. you know it's good to run it just to mm -hmm. change the fuel and stuff like that anyways what my point through this was is that if uh, the yeah, Kippy, if we can save money that's a really good idea well, well you're not going to save that much money running it once a week but i think it's, it's a way to save some money but also to to use a generator because it, it's not good just to let the thing sit there you know um all the time and i I don't know, you say it runs once a month? Once anyways? a week. Once a week? Once a week. And you Wednesdays at 1 o'clock for half an hour. Oh, okay. Anyways, what I was saying is that uh, if I have a $13,000 appropriation for electricity, we're halfway through the year and we've used 40% uh, of it. Um, you know, is there, it looks like it's going down. Is there some way that we could change that amount to be a little more accurate? Last year, I spent $12,303.04. I left on the table $696.53. I don't think I can get much more. I, I you okay. know, yeah, than that. especially is, with the rate. Unless, unless we can find other ways to conserve. That, but as far as the number itself is concerned, see, that's yeah, why I go back and good. I look to see what I've spent. I go, when, I, when I look at my numbers, I'll go back, like John says, I go back two, three years. Yep. And I look to see, and I go ahead and give myself a median on, on what I've been spending. And that's how I've been trying to put my numbers together. That's why, again, last year, you know, it was, it was, it was $700 difference. And, and you returned that, I understand. Yeah. I see a trend that, and I'm not sure why, but it's a good thing where the electricity has been coming down. Do you know of any? I'm just curious. I do not. They lowered the rates earlier this year. Right. The um, Attorney General's office went after them and declined okay. their rate increase. All right, well, now they have tried to increase the rates again this winter, and they've well, our, our, increase. Well, the solar project is coming, has come online finally. over. Mm -hmm. um, um, so we, we should see some discount, too. We too. should, yeah. Um, so we're so, but uh, but I that. would hate to yeah. but I would to. hate to like nickel and dime you. I, I I'd like to see what the true impact of that would be. Oh yeah, yeah. well yeah, that's that's not gonna we're not gonna really see that because it just came online. So that's gonna have to go through the, um, the billing, whoever we we get it from uh, Direct Energy, I think that is. I mean, Good Kevin, energy. Yeah. Good energy. Uh, I don't know, Kevin. I. I, I don't think I'd want to change your 13000 even though we know that we're, it's going to go down slightly because of the, or it will go down, maybe, to, it's supposed to be 20% uh, discount, right? I think so, yeah. No, I would leave it here for this year. I, I would leave it this sure. year just until we know what the mm -hmm. true discount is going to make impact. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, that's, okay. that's all right. Um, cause it's a little bit more tricky for me because I'll follow this around. What... Um, it talks about shop equipment, hand tools, and stuff for three thousand dollars. What, what exactly? That includes you get? just about anything. If we break a screwdriver, a drill bit, um, shovels, rakes, um, anything that's considered a hand tool, you know, maybe we should maybe I should take the word shop out of it. Hmm. Um, but it includes every anything that is socket sets, whatever. Shovel. It's a drill, uh, a cutoff saw, a yep. a um, 
bandsaw, hand bandsaw, you know, uh, you replace one of those, you know, you're talking 300 bucks. Right. Um, what is Blue Tarp Financial Incorporated? Where are you? I'm in the General Highway Repair Shop Equipment Hand Tools. Um, Sounds like a tarp. August 23rd and for $257. But the name just stuck out to me, so I didn't. Know. I would I would have to look to see who the vendor is. I don't. I, I we have so many vendors. I, I can't tell you. Now, does the highway department have a credit card at Home Depot? That is correct. Actually, it's the wastewater treatment plant does. Okay. But the plant is only the card holder, but expenses that come off go to wherever it belongs to. Mm -hmm. Very similar to if we go up to Shanahan's. We go to Shanahan's, we buy anything up there, it's underneath wastewater treatment. But if it's for highway, then it goes underneath the highway expenses and not wastewater treatment. It, yeah. I guess it really doesn't matter, but it seems like there's a blurred line between like vehicle maintenance and shop equipment and parts and stuff, because they all have this, a lot of the same people, whether it's CNA repair, leader home center, uh, our gas. Uh, it, depends, it depends on what it's for. What it's for. You know, if it's something that's vehicle orientated, then it goes to 240 vehicle maintenance. If it's a hand tool, then it goes to another one. So I, I try and keep them accurate to where they actually belong to. instead of just blending them together, which is what we had in the past. Right. Um. Um, I noticed uh, that you're doing a lot of patchwork this past fall. Mm -hmm. Are, um, is that reflective of the yeah, patch same materials level? all the way down the bottom? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like you're there's you um, level funded that, and you and you really you really have done you've been out hustling on that. Yeah, last year last year we only spent fifty percent of it. Um, last year we spent five thousand one hundred and eleven dollars and eighty two cents in patch. Um, but to be honest with you, I want to say that it truly wasn't a full year because we wanted to, again, I wanted to break another line item out mm -hmm. instead of just saying road materials. Right. That way we broke out patch. the patch to make sure that that was um, done properly so that we mm -hmm. know what we're actually putting out in patch. Yep. Um, the same thing to go along with that, because I hate coal patch. I think coal patch is the biggest waste of money. You put it in, you drive over it three times, it blows out. So that's why when we were able to go ahead and get the grant, we were able to, or not the grant, but we got the money from the state through Chapter 90, through pothole money. We are able to buy the hot box. The hot box in turn allows us to go ahead and take virgin material. We go ahead and we chop it up into little cubes. We store it through the winter. So when we need patch, we can have hot virgin asphalt wow. patch and not coal patch. That's interesting. So... Kevin, that's why it's been so much more effective. That's why we, that's yeah. what we're trying. Because the okay. Dura patch, I mean, granted, they, they say the Dura patch is supposed to be better. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, coal patch is coal patch. I don't right. like it. I, yeah. I, I feel coal patch is a waste of money. No, I just you didn't. Go ahead and, you I might mean, as well just put register. sand in the hole. You didn't register, yeah. so that explains it. So thank you. Uh, speaking about the, the road material and mm -hmm. uh, patching material, why, doesn't, why don't you use the Chapter 90 funds to pay for both of those? I don't think you can use gravel and stuff like that through Chapter 90, but to be honest with you, I'll ask. But then again, the other side of the coin is as soon as I start doing that, now you're not going to have roads paved. So, you know, if we start nickel and diming this part right here, you're going to start losing it on the other end. So it's, you're the boss, you tell me how to do it, and I'll do it. But well, then, I was just curious you know that, mean? and you can correct me, I'll, I'll ask you, what do we get, what do we get at annually for uh, Chapter 90 funds? Well, three and a quarter. Court. So if, by taking this uh, $25,000 out, it's not really going to stop a lot of work no, or slow it but down. But you go ahead and you take the twenty five grand over Ten. four there's years, a, there's a hundred grand, so there's, yeah. a, there's a road that it's not going to get paved. Right. It will me but. actually, Kip, it will mess up our road management plan. I mean, because Kevin, I mean, the road management plan is done out for, isn't it five years yes. out? So if you do that a little bit 
that does really chop off somebody that is on the end of the list that might come back and complain. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you buy a lot of hush money. I can see that. No, it's just they, I've been around enough to know when I've asked these questions that it, you really do. Mm. You, 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 it's a trade-off. And it, if Kev, Kevin's coming under three, uh, almost 3% less, this is not the time to nickel and dime the road materials so that we short out the five-year plan. I, I, I feel like if we're looking to versus, a, you know, if we're, in, if we were, this was 2008, when we we're looking at tree, tree work versus road materials, I definitely, definitely, definitely would have picked road materials that year. I would not have cut the tree budget. So, I mean, there are some things that you do, but I wouldn't, I would hate to short that. Okay. Just because you have the five-year plan already. Okay. Okay. Did, are you done questions? I'm done. Seriously? I'm done. Okay. Well, um, the only other question I had um, was on the snow, snow removal after, I know, um, crabbing at you. You did increase it to 90000 But do you, do you think um, that is more realistic? I mean, because honestly, I was Well, that, that like, was more of a recommendation that came out because I was going to level fund. Um, and they said historically in the past we have we have overspent except for 2016. Um, so the recommendation was to go ahead and bump it up 5,000. Only if I, well, you know, it was kind of my idea to go up to 95. You really feel that 90 is okay? No, I mean we're going to overspend. There's no doubt about it. Okay. I mean, it's just it's. Well, that that was kind of why I wanted to go up to 95 because we we have been overspending every year. I mean, mm -hmm. but the problem is if you go up too high and then you have a short year. So say hypothetically you go ahead and you go up to 95 and you go to a year of like 2016 where you only want 82,708 dollars, then you would end up having to, if you tried to reduce the budget, you're not allowed to do that because if you once you reduce once you go down, you're never allowed to go back up again. Is my general understanding of how that rule works with DOR allowing you to overspend the snow and ice budget. I think that's okay. right. It's just that, you know, I know 2016 was an odd year that we actually were less, because we usually double it. And I, uh, you know, but we're, we're not in tight, we're not as tight as we were. I just it was really traumatized in that 2008 budget year. And I um, just, you know, would appreciate more, more realistic spending. But you're probably right. That's okay. I'll yeah, because if, like I'll I said, if, if we go ahead and we go up too high, and, and I know. then it's going to come back and it's going to bite us later on. Yep. All right. And we do have glo global warming, so what the, whatever. I can tell this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Everybody's got wicked heavy coats. Okay. And then on street lighting, you know, um, I just right. had the question on, All you know, right, we keep talking it. about buying our street lights. Have we, have we figured that out yet? I reached out to Edgar, I can't think of his last yeah, name. Yeah, I know who you know. He's really nice. He, uh, yep. Basically what I did was I asked him, I said, what's, what's going to take for us to go ahead and change over our stuff to LED lights? And he says, they will not be doing it. They said that supposedly as part of their, what was it they were trying to do, their rate hike, but it was also part of another program they're all trying to put together at the same time. They're trying to roll it all in. Mm -hmm to be able to say, okay, well, we want this rate hike, but, you know, to give back, you know, we're also going to go ahead and we're going to turn in all of you know, our street lights to LEDs. You know, the same BS they told us, you know, which, five which years Which realistically, ago. according to Edgar, really isn't probably going to end up happening. So the long and the short is, is, oh. is if we want LED lights, then we have to purchase the lights, the existing lights that we have now, out of our contract, and then go ahead and repurchase LED you know, this, this, we did the, we've, uh, it's been at least five years, and that's the same story every so, year. I, I can't Now, what I the cost of the it. lights are, he no. said, is going to depend on how long they've been up. No, we already did Whether the they're a, a 12 hour, a 24 hour, uh, however they're configured. He, he started talking, I'll be honest with you, it was all over my head when he started talking all these no, differences, I, the sodium, high sodium, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm like, okay. No, we looked so at the nuts energy and bolts, committee what's already, the real deal? And he said, you got to buy them back, and then you need to go ahead and purchase the new ones. So then I asked, I said, so what's it going to take to go ahead and find out what it's going to be? And he goes, you ask me, he says, and I'll run out the numbers. So I have not asked him to run out the numbers yet. 
Never mind. I, I mean, just, we can. It's the just same just story. that way we know. Uh, I'd ask him. Yeah. Yeah. I would too. I'd be more than happy to analyze the numbers for you. Yep. All right. I think Good. it's worth getting started on, anyways. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. What's the cost? No, it just, yep. yeah. it just it's just in the long run. I mean, it's just that's messing one thing around. That's never going to go down in I price. Know. I know. Mm -hmm. But it just and LEDs are going to help a ton. I know. It's I just, just don't hard. understand the part. What? Why do we have to buy them out? What's what's the? Well, I don't see why a, we can't pressure them to t do LED lights. This is what drives me crazy. Yeah, supposedly they said they. It was I don't know. It was, he he mentioned on how it worked with some. This is ever source. You know what? This yeah. is something that we should. Some technicality we should, or, or the regulation or. We should try to sort it out. We're, okay. You know, we'll, sure. we'll try to get an answer when we go to the MMA. All right. Because this drives me crazy. I know some communities, they've worked some kind of deal. So right. Well, thought, what it was, like Greenfield? Greenfield owns all their own lights. No, I know. But they got some kind of grant up front to do that. Okay. Right. When they were the first ones to get green community, that was like their... Gotcha. Because you know, I know he said that Greenfield thing. owns their own lights. He says Amherst owns their own lights. Um, but there's something else. Too, so we'll, we'll I mean, just they're find all big out cities what we And they got do. the people to go ahead and work on the lights all the time, too. That's a good so. MMA kind mm -hmm. of... Um, just to make sure I got don't a forget. Note. Do we know. tax Eversource on their polls? Yes. Yes. Actually, it's not Eversource. It's uh, Verizon. 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 Because Verizon actually owns the polls. Well, Eversource yeah. owns a, quite a bit of them, too. Uh, they own a few. Yeah, they do. Like the one we just approved last week. They only own about 5 or 10% in Deerfield. It's yeah. a town-by-town town variable. Yeah. Yep. Um, anyway, okay. Thank you, Kevin. If we're all done questions. All right. We're just, this is a good, I'm really good. good start. Thank you for being so prepared. Thank you both. And I, and I Kevin, I, I just want to thank you further. for doing the trending um, of what your actual expenses are. Because, yes, huge uh, help. Uh, it, it's very, very important. And that's one of my biggest things with the schools. If we actually could trace what the actual expenses were year to year, it would be so much more understandable to us than just adding on, you know, your bottom line a couple percent or a few percent whatever so anyway thank you both all right so we're we're good no office building no transfer station no. um do you guys want to do you feel like you want to do wastewater treatment tonight uh wastewater is still it, well salaries is still kind of up in the air but wastewater itself should be all set but like town office building maintenance transfer station we still got a few do in wanna, here do you want to do those oh, let's let's finish them up then um so kevin do, you don't have to come back again um, are you sure you don't mind staying? No, no, I okay. just assume. John, if you, you want to, you don't have to stay. No, I don't. Whatever, okay. Whatever's good for you guys. All right. Let's, yep. let's try to finish this up. Kip, did you have any transfer station oh. questions? Uh, transfer station went down 6.93%. I s dropped it by $13,000. Thank you. Presently right now, um, last year, if this works out correctly, if we make the same revenue last year that what my projection is for this year, it'll cost us $500 to run the transfer station. Kevin, also, that is wonderful. Years so long ago, as everything is I was flipping out. We had properly. at least $157,000 or $56,000 subsidy, and you have worked it down to 500 bucks. That is amazing. You know, one of the big things is... is, is, is Pushing people super hard to go ahead and buy the stickers. Right. That made a huge difference. Yep. I mean, we made. That was uh, hard work that you guys did. I shouldn't say job. we made. We generated uh, almost seventy nine thousand dollars in stickers, which which inadvertently is keeping, you know, because when it, it goes, it go, almost goes kind of similar to to the um, to the sewer system. Okay. Right now, or in the past, the entire town was subsidizing the transfer station and not everybody uses the transfer station. So that's why we were trying to get it to the point that the people that actually use the station pay for the Absolutely. station and not have the entire town have to pay for it because the other people that go ahead and pay for their pickup, you know, they're, they're basically being charged double. You know, right. that would be like, like you having to go ahead and shell out cash and, and then go ahead and rebuild your entire um, septic system. You know, so that's that's why we try and, and I, like I said, I skewed these numbers down as best as possible. Nope, look at where we're at. Look to how much I, look to how much we've we've turned in the past, um, and try to be realistic. You know, not shortchange myself where I'd have to come back and say, okay, well, I've got I got nine budgets and I need 
15 um, transfers, but I also want to make sure that I don't looking for too much money. So right. the long and the short is, is if anybody's looking for free cash out of any of my budgets next year, <laughs> you're going to get like next to nothing. Well, right. yes, but Be accurate. The, it's a fine line because otherwise you're picking up junk all over town and that's cost highway time and our guys going out in the bushes pulling down all the stuff. So the one item that I always watch is the bulky dumpster, bulky item dumpster. And you actually decreased it, but it's still, it's $18,000 and we only collect 8,700. So Correct. The, the bulky item dumpster has always been a problem, but I think truthfully that has been the lowest difference that there has ever been. Mm. I think that truly. What goes into the bulky item dumpster? Anything that doesn't go in a bag. Yeah. No, it's like you got people to show up with, you know, they, they built a chairs, they built a chair, they built a shed, they built something, Rotten excess scrap material, scrap couches, wanna, um, cushions, cushions, we, chairs, um, picnic tables. Pic we crushed a picnic table today and tossed it in there. Um, but each where time, where does that get taken to? Um, I don't know. So to be honest with you, I, contractor yeah. through for cog picks up those dumpsters. And that is correct. Yeah. And they dispose of it and charge us whatever the weight is. Per that is correct. Yeah. It's, it, we pay by the pound. Yeah. And, and we don't generate charge... any money for recycling from there though, do we? No, because the metal no, goes into that's the not, metal. That's one. not part of recycling because that's a, that's a flat out cost because there is no, there is no generation of cash through the bulky item, but there is through paper and, um, metal, metal. And, metal, if you have uh, a metal glass, item, glass, it, plastic, it, it, that's plastic, you can plastic tin. Sorry, brain's starting to switch cheese hey, up here a little bit. Like, plastic yeah, tin I'm sorry, um, and glass is all in one. And then we also generate some cash through uh, our paper. Oh. Um, I do not have those revenues in front of me, but I do know we make a little bit of well, money. Well, no, I was just impressed that this is the closest, uh, the smallest gap that I've seen in the whole time I've been in the selectman. So that's wonderful. I mean, because like last year, last year I dropped it down 1.37%. The year before that, I dropped it down 37%. Granted, the year before that, it went up 8%, but that was where that got really skewed up because if you look at 2015, it says that we saved 33%, and the total appropriation was 176, 622, but we actually spent 255, 378. I, yeah, but I every year is, is different, and it's so, just, it depends on how sure much how you get for. Up. Well, you get recycling. It depends on what, the quality of your recycling and all kinds of stuff. But it doesn't matter the, the, the fact that it's good trend, but the bulky item thing is, is it, to me, a, uh, the best thing I've seen mm -hmm. ever. So thank you. Um, okay. Which one do you well, want to go on to next? Wastewater expense. You, oh, you I guess. want to I don't, that? I don't have, yeah, I mean, might as well, that's the last one he's got, right? I've All right, only got Kevin, like, then you will not have to come back. I've only got like four more besides wastewater. Okay. I think we're good oh, wait, on no, three more. We're good on the oh, others. You know what? I, I gave you your wastewater. Here. No, no and, well, sure. and you with your wastewater. I don't know what happened to mine. We just oh, got can we one. Skip, can we skip wastewater? No, no, that's okay. <clears throat> um, bye, John. Oh, no, here it is. It's you just it? misfiled. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. How did I do that? That was not very slow. Does anyone have any questions on it? Um, Kip, did you have any questions on this? You're no, this? Okay. Kevin, do you, is there anything that you have a question on? I, For wastewater? I, yeah. You know, we, we know it's climbing up, but we know we have expenses that are coming. And um, do we have in this... Uh, budget any um, cost to fix the pumps and stuff at Captain Lathrop? Is that already spent in 2017? Uh, that is actually part of the sewer line maintenance, pumping station maintenance. So I got $90,000 okay. in there. Yep. Personally, right now, with, with the help of KIPP, we were able to go ahead and, and secure some information from, excuse me, from a uh, gentleman from Suez. Yep. He ended up coming up um, with an electrician. Uh, I think we talked about this a little while ago, and the long and the short is, is, is I was holding back on it for the simple fact is, is I needed to talk. You weren't sure how it's all going together. Yeah, I, need, yep. I needed to talk to the pump manufacturer because yep. the, 
I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. The pump curve was too far to the right. Right. And that was one of the things I was concerned about. And the gentleman that they brought me, you know, got me in touch with, um, very, very good. He walked me right through it. Good. And it seems like the, the pump horsepowers, even with the cutters on them, yep. would be okay. Um, definitely going from, it's still going to be a single phase entry power, but it'll go through a VRO that'll change it over to a three phase, which will not hammer the electronics per se quite yep. so hard, which I think is maybe one of the problems that we've been having also. Okay. Um, you know, because I mean, we we're, we were running that, that lift station for many years with those same type of pumps. And, you know, the past couple of years is when we really started having the issues. Now, right. the question is, is was it a deal of more people are using wipes? Was it more people moving in using wipes? Mm -hmm. Is it a combination of using more wipes and the electronics getting older? It was, I think it's just a right. kind of combination of. So I do believe, and this is a ballpark, ballpark number off the top of my head, it was like 30,000 right. to be able to go ahead to change out the system, would not end up oh. changing out the rails. What it would be is be replacing the pumps and changing out some of the electronics and the float systems to go along with that. Okay. Um, now, if we went ahead and drained the system down or drained the tank down. All the way. And found more issues down inside, that could be a little bit more money. Right. Um, the only other thing that really hasn't come in too much is I need to find out exactly how long the pump is going to be down because obviously. Right. We just can't you shut off the sewer. Off. So now what we end up having to do is we're going to end up having to block the line going to the lift station and go into that manhole and basically pump all the way from down. that manhole to another manhole on North Main Street. And you won't do that in this type of weather? Yeah, well, preferably not. No. Um, but, you know, again, you know, it all depends on how long we're going to be down. You know, can they get right. this thing knocked out in a day? Right. That's not too bad. Where is this thing going to take three or four days? Right. You know, and then Big story. now you're talking, you know, people having to go back and refuel this pump every three hours, blah, 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 blah. It's just, right. it's. Okay. I'm not really sure. I just wanted to make sure uh, that we but had But realistically, some that, that would be, I would feel that would be more of a capital expense. Okay. Uh, because of the cost and because right. of what it is. Yep. Um, which would basically not really come into play as far as what these the, the expenses are. themselves are concerned. It would okay. probably come out of their. Reserve. Reserved revenue. I know. What's yeah, reserve it? fund. Transfer fund. Um, Kevin, I just had a couple questions on a, um, which is kind of related. So you feel comfortable with the ninety thousand for that um, line item for pumping station main maintenance? For the maintenance themselves, what we were just discussing is if we go yeah, ahead and we change that whole thing over, that's going to that's, that's, that's going to be reserve fund. That, that'll have to be capital. That cannot come out of my because it's more than ten thousand dollars. Right. Okay. Then, then the other thing but is... But you still anticipate spending $90,000 there? Not just there. That's my sewer line. That's everything. Because we know full well that we have high I&I, and, I, and mm -hmm. it's not cheap to line um, line the pipes. So, it's so even, it's act, even act more act. expensive to go ahead and dig the pipes and replace the pipes. So this is something we need to be looking at, because when was the last time we, we replaced any sewer main? Hmm in the town besides one that's the one that they did in old deerfield which reduced our i and i there by over 37 percent right do you think it's adequate though um going off of again i i like to go back to the original plan that was looked at a few years ago where they did a 12-year outlook as to where we need to be as far as our funds are concerned. Um, and I'm just trying to stick with that. I'm trying to, st I'm trying to it plan. We spend money to I'm put a plan together, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to stick just, with the plan. I just don't want it to short you too much. I think, I think we'll be all right. But again, you know, it all depends. I mean, we can see very fortunately for me, you know, if, if we get a, a sewer break per se, it's not like a water break. You know, you're right. not having stuff gushing out of the ground like, like Roger has to deal with. Yeah. You know, we, so we inadvertently, we end up gaining water when we have a break. So it's not a deal where, like, we're leaching into something because realistically, I would say 98% of all of our sewer lines are underneath the water table 
or pretty close to the water table. And that's why, again, we have all our I and I that's coming in. Okay. I just, I just wanted to make sure it was um, more. The other one that did go up is the very last one, uh, mm -hmm. administrative indirect. Mm -hmm. There is a spreadsheet or an explanation here on how it was put together. Well, actually, I was. I gonna, talked to I was, Brenda about that. I'm um, good with I that. I was looking at the consulting fees. I mean, is that? Do we really use that much? We're going to. Okay. Which, I mean, yeah, sorry. For which one? We're going to have engineering. 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 I and I coordination. Yeah, for the financial model. Yeah, we are because, okay. I mean, my understanding is is come January fifteenth, once uh, Wendy comes back, we're going to be putting out the bid, requesting bids for in a complete and total evaluation of our entire system, both plants, okay. collection system, transfer, uh, lift station, everything. That, am I fairly correct on that? We're not going to do that for $32,000. No. no. <laughs> but that's where we need to start. We need to have something there to, to start somewhere. Okay. You were talking about... Um, when I asked about the $90,000 for a pump station, you talked about the sewer line maintenance and the I&I and, &I and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. there's another line item for, talks about I&I and &I, uh, of $50,000. How far down on you? I'm sorry. Uh, oh, okay, wait a minute. Almost near the bottom. Okay, that is, that is for being bringing somebody in to be able to go ahead and run all of those uh, the meters the flow meters that are supposed to be going in that we're supposed to be doing for DEP mm -hmm. um, and it's it's all of the engineering that goes in behind it and again these are the numbers that were generated for us through that um, that program that they put out okay. um, well if we um if we, if, do you th well, we have a couple of months that you can adjust yeah. this based on what the sewer committee does. I just wanted you to have the sewer committee have some input, maybe, or whatever. Oh, I don't, uh, we, I, I canceled the, the last sewer study meeting because I don't think that there's anything for us to discuss. Until you get that. We, we get some responses Constant. back from okay. the RFP. Which right. will be after our budget, I think. Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, okay. I, I'm... I'll probably email the board again and ask if anybody has any input or anything they think we need to discuss. But I, at this point, I think we've really talked about everything right. that we need to talk about. We just need to get some, you know, the board feels we need guidance to uh, go forward with the study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Right. While, while we're talking about this, though, um, did you folks receive an email? from our uh, sewer plant operator about the conditions with the rags and stuff? No. He sent it to Wendy and I got it. I did not um, see it. I, I didn't see it. briefly talked with Kevin about it and he thinks that it might have something to do with all of this uh, rag material mm -hmm. that's getting in there and it is going toward uh, our uh, disposal fee oh. and, you know, perhaps, and there's a lot of ambiguity here because if that's the case then uh, maybe Keith has been taking some heat because the people that are treating this are saying to him there's too much garbage in here you know you need to clean it up and you know he can't really do that um, till we get a headworks program till we right? get a headworks program um, I know that he was not in favor of this um, but everything that I've learned over the last year and a half, brings me right back to what I first saw of this channel cleaner. Yep. It the gets rid monster. of 90% of all this stuff. Even um, in the meantime. I'm not saying, it's never have said it's going to be a, a cure-all, but it's something that can literally be put in place, bolted down, and put online in a matter of a week. Can get, I believe we'll get rid of a lot of the rag material and stuff that's causing a lot of issues. It's not going to solve the whole plant's problem. Correct. Then once we do get going on whatever else we're going to do, we can unbolt it, take it out, we could move it to Old Deerfield, or we can sell it. Right. You know? But 
I, just, I agree with you. I don't want to interrupt Kevin. Kevin's mm -hmm. No, I agree with you on that. I, I think the sooner we start getting that junk out of there, the better. Yeah, because it's killing us. Because yeah. there's, there's, there's a plant right now. Uh, we used to be able to bring it to uh, Blackstone. We right. can't bring it to Blackstone anymore because of the garbage that's there's in no there. There's no one left. Um, right now, we're going to Cranston, so Rhode that's Island. A huge right. Impact to us. So it's massive. I, everywhere. It, it would pay for itself. It would. I, I, yeah. I know, I know can, can Keith was very strong, had very strong it? feelings against it. And, um, but for the time I, I just, I just oh. think that this is something that uh, we need to strongly consider and do it fairly quick. I, um, I'm with you on that, Kip. I, I have to say I agree with you, Kip, a lot. I mean, oh, my God. This, one, this is like a... Like three, you know, uh -huh. This is like three or four. Oh it's my like God. almost... And it's going to be a fresh new year. I know. I can see 2018 is going to be good. Okay. Do you have anything else, Kevin? I, I think we're good. Uh, yeah. Listen, you um, can street go lighting you guys are okay on. Yep. yep. Um, that right there, uh, we dropped it. I dropped it a thousand dollars because I yep. looked at what we spent. Okay. You know, anticipation. So, street lighting went down a thousand. Uh, test well monitoring. Um, I kept it the same. Um, simple fact. I mean, you go ahead and you look at. Well, we're Where we're at, you know, I dropped it down from 90000 to 70000 Granted, we only spent 24000 last year. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Let me go. 45000 on 2017. Um, but I know that we just ended up signing a contract for, what, 61000 Yeah. So, and that's pending. We don't have any more well issues. Right. If we have any more well issues, then... So I'll end up having to come back yeah. and ask for yep. more money on that. No, you have to be able to do a couple extra things. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you have to have some flexibility. And the only other one I really got is town office building. Mm. Uh, that was realistically, uh, from 18 to 19, I dropped it. Sounds like a lot, 1.11%, but I dropped it $1,000. Um, realistically, it's up from... From 2017 to 2018, it went up 48 percent, but that was due to the uh, anticipated association of expenses for the church building. So, if you actually took out the church building, I went down 3,500 dollars. Okay. No, I, I don't remember seeing that one. I'm trying to. I don't see it either. I'm just. Oh, here we go. It's in the front uh, under tab one. Oh, is it? Yeah. Uh, 192, 5400. Yep. Yep, you went down 1.11 percent. You know what? I have to say, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that I haven't even looked at it. No, I, I just got a lot of this today. I um, it was in my book. No, I did kind of take a little bit of a liberty on this one. Mm hmm Of, because originally it went up, and then I started thinking that, you know, hopefully that we would all come to an agreement on the sewer so. charge. So, because originally the sewer charge Almost was the, yeah, uh, last. basically eight thousand dollars, right? Is what I was going to be asking for. So I went from eight thousand to fifteen hundred. Was that based on the spring reading? Yeah, because what I did was I went back through because you know originally I went and looked at it, and the first number I plugged into I was like, oh my god, you know we're getting a seventy five hundred to seventy eight hundred dollar sewer bill. I'm not going to be able to cover this. No matter how I look at it, I can't steal from Peter to pay Paul on anywhere here to make up that right. huge amount of money. I got to put it in. So mm -hmm. then I put it in. I just plugged the number in there for a while. And then I started looking at it and I started thinking about it. And then we started looking at what the other numbers were. And it's like, you know, I don't see any reason, again, because, you know, fortunately mm -hmm. we, we've all come to the decision tonight that we are going to go basically off of our winter rate, and which, which would make sense. And go ahead and put in put a, in a, a uh, another meter. Is that a huge expense? A meter? Just meter? The meter is probably going to cost you. Uh, well, it depends on what meter Roger is going to want us to put in. Well, but a couple the, thousand dollars will pay the, back. Yeah, yeah, I would say within a couple grand. I would say it's for ourselves. We're not trying to prove anything. Right. We just if we go it. off of our winter use, we know we're not sprinkling. Why can't that be our rate? Right. You know. Okay. The only thing I'm concerned about, because I don't know exactly, because I really don't deal with the fields, is is part of the winter rate or my winter reading actually having some of my spring irrigation? irrigation. Depending well, on, because they do I it mean, in I May, can't right? I imagine the irrigation being turned on before May. Sometimes, 
I kept sometimes. What? April, I mean, May. I've, April, I've, we've had spr yeah. springs that have been really dry. So I mean, it's it's. I mean, it won't be much. up to you guys, whatever you want to do. But that's. I mean, you know, it's right. The kind of direction I'm looking at. Okay. For 40 years, I played on a ball Thank field. You. Never saw a sprinkler, and we. I got a lot of grass things. I don't know. That was before global warming. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Climate change. Climate change. Thank um, you. So other than that, I think that pretty much pretty much hits all of my all of my budgets. Kevin, Great. actually, it was pretty fast. I'm sorry. I was just trying to be sympathetic. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. You know, like I said, I just soon just. Hadn't even had dinner. So I'm here. Honestly. Yeah, my stomach's rumbling, and like I said, I'm starting to get a little punchy. I know. Please go home and eat. Thank so you so much. Bring some back. Guys, you know, bring it back. I, I, I really appreciate back. you coming in tonight. Very good. Thank you. And, Thank um, you. And, make and again, sure this is preliminary. I mean, obviously, this is stuff. You know, it's still I open. Yep. It's on the table to talk about. Yeah, but we'll it, it's a really good there. start, and I appreciate all the extra work you put in the budget this year. And sure. please make sure you tell thank you to the, all the highway. Yes, guys. Michelle, for really all the hard work, for wonderful. sure. Wonderful. Excellent. I will really appreciate this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you Have a good night. Have a nice Happy time. New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. Oh, and happy New Year. That's right. Happy New Year. So I'm going to be happy, working. guys. I mean, I could be happy. So. We're, Kippy and I are really like green on everything tonight. Um, Can we appoint, uh, or do you have other questions oh, on the budget? Oh, you know what? I just wanted to go over OPEB because this is, okay. is going to be a huge increase. But, you know, I really don't feel comfortable with 25000 I Right. I, I really want fifty. Um, I'll second we, that. We have a million to $2 million liability. I, we can argue all night, but 25000 to a $1 million, and we, we've only been doing, we did 10000 So we have 35000 towards a million to two million dollar liability. That's just not. I'll second to fifty. Oh, okay. Thank you. Do you, have, do you want to discuss it? No. Okay. You really you agree with me again? No. I just, <laughs> you asked me <laughs> to discuss it. I said no. <laughs> it's still <laughs> open, and I'm sure it will be discussed well, five more please. times. So. Will I vote for it? Yeah, because I thought I was going to have like this really big fight with you about it. <laughs> you don't need my vote. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm trying to find consensus, Kevin. I, don't, I always try to find. I don't. Consensus. I don't. I don't know enough about it, so I'm. I, I'd rather not. But that's okay. All right. We're we're going to have this discussion. I'm sure five well, five we'll, more times. So we'll, yeah. I so Jeff, do you understand what I'm trying to say though? About we we have. I, I will argue. People want to argue, whatever the amount is, but it's definitely between a million and two, and we've only put a we put away ten thousand dollars. This is for OPEB. This is for OPEB. And so the recommended amount this year, you know, is 25000 No, we need to put at least fifty. We need to make it look like we're having a good faith. What I guess, look, I guess what so I'm, I'm not like understanding mm -hmm. is, is that our, it what, affects is this, our credit rating. what is this money going to be used for? I mean, in the back of my head, post, I know, but. Uh, other post-retirement benefits for all the people How that are going to be retired. We we pay it out of our operating budget as we go. Right as we go, and, and it's going to get it? it's going to get it's oh, going to grow it's gonna so out. large yeah. that we wouldn't have. Well, just think back to your so, same arguments. But so instead of trying to adjust what the problem is going to be, we're just looking at how are we going to put money. What, what's the difference if we take money from the taxpayers to put in an account here, or we take money from the taxpayers yearly to pay for it? I guess because it's going to get too big. Down the road, that we won't have enough money. We can't raise it. We'll shut down the town. Yeah, you won't have money any other place. So you're you're starting a pool of money to draw from in the future, like an insurance how policy. Gonna, how, how are you going to keep supporting that? Though that's what I'm saying. We're paying for it now. We're going to put money away. You're going to you're ending up in. The well, same it's because time. all the, all of you. Uh, excuse me. It's from all the baby boomers that are going to be retiring, yeah. and there's not enough Our people. Costs. Right. Fa falling in behind to pay for the a massive amount of health care that we're all living longer, that we're all going to end up having to pay for. We're just not going to have, we would have to, it, it will swallow up every other budget line we have in the future. So the plan is to put a little away as we can now so that we can then also budget in our thing, but then have another set, an, another pool of money to draw from that we've been planning for in the future. Wendy, Wendy's not here, so she, she won't rib me about this. But, <laughs> but in the real world, uh -huh. you know, uh, companies have insurance and the government has a thing and the government did. Somewhere along the line in municipal 
governments, well, you know, we're, we're not going to charge you these taxes. We, you know, you can take care of these people. Well, that's when people used to die at 60 years old. Mm -hmm. Thank God we don't do that anymore. Correct. But, you know, so now, like you say, we we're going to do gonna both. have this large pool of people, and we're still going to have to pay for it. Or, or during, during the same time that we're doing this, yeah. we start adjusting, you know, the amount that we're covering for insurances. Yeah. We, you have to do both. I, I you, understand you that. You've got to become. That's my point. If I agree. You, if you don't change the system, you're never going to catch Absolutely. up. Absolutely. you got to do both. Agree. You I have agree. to but do both. I, I estimated this. I didn't even know anything about this until about three years ago. And I went to the MMA conference, and I heard about it. And I asked around there, and people you were putting away tens it's, of thousands of dollars well, and you we, go to we, you go to I big cities know, nobody you, even heard about it well yeah. it's always been there it's it's always been there know, we don't take social security money and we don't and there's a lot of things that we say well we're just going to pay for it well you know i think you know it's conceivable that we are paying retirements for three police chiefs you know in not that long of time you know i just mm -hmm. happen to pick them up but you know there's it could there be the same thing with right. the all kinds of no doubt about there's it there's all kinds of things so you know as big of a, a concern that is is we need to start looking how do we change this and, and that's should I be agree. just as big of a conversation it is absolutely it is but i'm just saying that $25,000 is not going to get us there i think if 50 isn't either but 50 looks better from well, credit, from the credit, credit ratings, rating system, the, the, and that costs us direct money. Even, even at the uh, school committee conference that I went to in November, this was a huge breakout session, packed room, and, you know, a lot of towns are behind the eight ball, but they're finally, as we are, stepping up and starting to fund it, 100000 200000 a year. Obviously, some towns are much bigger and their liability is much bigger, um, but they're, and, and, and the guy doing the presentation did bring up the bond rating. And when we go to apply for money, if we're not showing any kind of effort as to trying to, to handle this huge it liability does, in the future, they're thinking, oh, it's like the sewer rates. Oh, you guys got the money. You don't need it. We're fine. You can afford a higher rate. Um, so I just think conservatively we should, put, we should put some money aside while we can and while it, you know, while we need thing. to. It's just to look a little bit more realistic. And, and, and I see that, money. but I mean, it's, it's we have, the money. town has, yeah. the town it's has, not going anywhere. Right. the town has good assets, we, we pay our bills, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't. Well, this will help us pay it, though, only down the road a little. Okay. It, it's not going anywhere. It's pay it now or pay it later, I'm and, thinking. And the thing is, if we have a really bad year, like 2008, mm -hmm. uh, obviously we're back you off, were, obviously. You were, I was traumatized by that year, but truly. <laughs> We could go back and just not yeah. fund it that year, you know. I mean, yeah. whatever. Right. But I, I, I just think fifty thousand is more realistic than twenty-five. So I'll make a motion to adjust that to fifty thousand. And I'll second that. So you, you feel off the hook. Right. But all of the, all of the question. Favor, oh. Once again, if you have a plan, a long-term plan, where you're increasing that dollar amount on an annual basis, that's a good faith effort too. It so is. Go ten thousand and then twenty thousand and then forty thousand or whatever. Yes. Well, my idea was my, actually, my Jeff, on. my idea was to go to fifty and then go up ten incrementally, ten thousand every year to a hundred. So it would take us five more years to get up to a hundred, and then we just stay at a hundred. I mean, I I'm I'm not I'm I think that everybody else. I still be in think the same there's a lot of questions about this system too. I know, a lot but of confusion about it. I, I know, other but that's than it's why, a huge liability, right, right? But that's why I wasn't willing to go up a huge amount. But I thought if we went up to fifty, because ten is ridiculous. But if we, we went up to fifty, well. and then we went up to ten every year for five years, then we'd be at a hundred, and we just stay at a hundred, and then it looks like a good faith effort. It should give us the best bond rating because we have the best bond rating and we can mm -hmm. maintain the best bond rating. But then we've just stopped this whole debate of what our real end is going to be because actually we've been very conservative and I, and I, I have a hard time with the numbers too. I mean, I, I, by their calculations, I believe it is like 1.7 million and I know we've argued in the past. Everybody doesn't believe me. But there's got to be, you have to have 
you have to be realistic. So I think the, in five years or six years down the line, we'll be at 100. We just stay at 100, and that's more than good faith, and we just don't worry about the end numbers because those end numbers are so squishy. I just don't. It depends on who retires when and, and what their liability and, and, is. And, every t and you, can't get, you can't get a number from somebody that's solid. I mean, that's the problem. Everyone you talk to gives you a different number. So it's just that the numbers are huge. We have to have a good faith effort. So does that sound like it's reasonable to you? Well, obviously, you want to, you want to ensure a decent bond rating. You don't want to jeopardize that. I mean, we've well, already run into that mm -hmm. with the sewer issue. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we don't, we don't want to Well, that, that's that why I feel like the, 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 the 50, and then you do f 10 every year for five years, and then you just keep it at 100. That's, I think that's probably a you know, I mean, discussion for Yeah, we'll bring it up again. People, Absolutely. Including, Absolutely. Including Absolutely. the Finance Committee. I don't want to Absolutely. Finance Committee. No, but right. do, do, it doesn't sound, person. but it does sound reasonable, doesn't it? But not too, I, I just don't want to be too excessive, because you know what? You're tying up all this uh, money. I think I'd need to think about that a little bit more. OK. I'm open to negotiations, as long as you agree with the 50 first. So you I, know, I'm McDaniel. <laughs> do you know what what do we pay annually right now today? Oh, I don't know. You'd have to I I have to get the actual numbers, but it's. Um, I know it's I, kind of I, buried I, in with our health care insurance. Yeah, and all it the is. Other things. I think we only pay for five or six people at the moment. I think. Let's see. Well, we should, we'll figure it out. We should, that's a good question to, to get the I answer mean, to. You know, I think you, there's I think there's five or six. Well, wait a minute. No, if well, we five have or a, six people, where does your $1.7 million No, it's, it's all the people in the future, all the people it's, from the it's schools. Be, yeah, because it's yeah. only a third is our It's town. just our employees. But this is just, I'm talking about the town, the schools. The schools on the other the end, they're, they are funding the their OPEB money as well. I, I, I get that, but this is what I'm saying. You know, when you talk about a dozen people that we have now, what does that cost? And, you know, 20 years down the road, those 10 people might not be there anymore. There might be other people. There, there will be other people. There will so be other people. More, there will be other people. more and more. So that's why I don't, you know. There'll be saying, more yeah, people. I'm not, let's not argue. Well, it doesn't really matter because then a, a, um, an actual, we have to, we have to this year, I think, have an actuary no, come in. Is it next, next year? year? It's next year. An actuary come in and, and do this and we get us. To pay somebody. To give us an actual them, number. To give us an accurate number, but I don't want to pay extra by having someone come in separately. So we just, this is where Riding we can do the long range to. plan because if I can just get you up to 50 this year, then we can figure out is 10 enough? You know, is that gonna be adequate for the 2020 budget? Cause we'll have to do it in 2019, so. They got, they got to come in and do it. I don't know. Anyways, I, know. I, I had voted aye. Oh, if, <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. aye. Just say it. Uh, be nice. I don't agree with this. That's but, okay. Yeah, but doesn't it mean you just, I mean, you just don't want to pay for it, which I totally get because I, I, I resentfully have to pay for it. It isn't that I don't want to pay for it, it's that I, I don't believe that that type of money is warranted at this time because. You know the numbers don't really support it. But you won't have time to catch up. The whole idea is that yeah. when it is important, you won't have these ten years to be able to fund it. So to say, but in twenty years, like I'm saying, in twenty years, some of these people aren't going to be here anymore. No, but more and more well, will I, be. I understand more and more, but over those twenty years, we could also change this. Correct. We can adjust. We can adjust our burden. You know, yeah. You know, having a, the conversation, I, I do believe, is very important. Yes. You know, um, and and. Putting some money away, I, I agree with. It. I just I think it's a large amount of money. I, I, I like Jeff's uh, suggestion of that we're at 25, maybe go to 30 this year. You know, no, no, we do 50, whatever. Okay. We we have to look good. I mean, the whole the real incentive at this point is, is the bond is, rating. Is the bond rating. So we just have to look like we're doing something halfway decent. But we um, get the best rate now, don't we? Yes, but we I do, just don't want to but it will start it. affecting oh. it. Um, that's what's really important. Okay, we got to finish up here. Yes, so we still have to go in executive session. Okay, we um, we're what have point, we done? We're going to appoint. Oh, we got to do Kyle Scott. Yep. And we got we got that agri uh, <coughs> aggregation project too. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, um, you want to make I, a motion? Someone make I, a motion. I make a motion to appoint Kyle Scott to the town of Deerfield building commissioner position. Mm -hmm. Second. 
Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, okay. Effective what? January 8th? Ja oh, January, January 1st, 1st 2018. Yep. Um, Do we need a signature it? on that? Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's right here. But what about that um, FERC hog aggregation project? Uh, I was confused about that because yeah. I, th I thought that was a lot like our good energy. Maybe I was going to ask you about that, Kip, and what your thoughts were, and did we want to get involved? Or? Way. I, I, I don't see that as a, a benefit at this time. I don't know that much about that other than what I read briefly. Yeah. Um, since we are involved, we do have a contract now for a couple of years. Right. Uh, and I, I would really like to see how it's our solar credits are going to work out to how it's going to affect our bill going forward. Yep. And I, I will assume that whether we're with the people we are now or with this other organization, we would still be able to, you know, use those credits in some right. fashion. Yep. Uh, the only thing I can say is uh, being quite involved in this looking at the Hampshire uh, County government uh, program and then looking at these other ones I don't see that it's going to really benefit us a lot okay it's it's, a, it's another it's another county you know mm -hmm. service that you know they're going to be looking at money too so. yeah okay do we want to say that um, they were not we're, we're interested but at this time we're, we're not partaking but just a yeah. letter of interest sure. I, um, yeah keep the door I think open we should, sure Keep the door open. That's fine. It's just another option for sure. you. Because mm -hmm. that was my concern. Is just I thought we were doing pretty good at the. Well, moment. if we could compare the two, you know, if they if they can come and do a presentation and sure, it, we like can last com time. yeah I compare mean, it to we, what John's got, then we fine. got a. I don't remember. Was it five or seven and a half? Was it seven and a half? I think it was seven and a half percent reduction from what we were paying. For the, at the last two agreements we had with the Northampton organization. Yeah. And, so. and I really want to see what the River Road thing is going to do to us. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, I am too. That, cause I don't want to mess that up. I mean, we've been waiting so long for that. Right. I, I, I think, if my memory serves me right, regardless of who we get it from, we're still going to get, get those that. credits. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I, oh, okay. I'm real sure. All right. Um, I wasn't sure about that. I, I think that we... There was something that I didn't really understand about applying it to certain bills, but the town has so many that right. you know we could you know we buy way do it for one. You know, you could apply it to there. Yeah. Okay. So Key, I guess what we want to do is we want to say we're, we're interested but we're already committed to a com is our contract. Out? Like it's for at least two, two years. years. Two yeah. years. Yeah. To, for two more years. Okay. So it's Basically, we're saying keep going, but we're not going to do it. Okay, um, we have to um, uh, sign this um, Sunderland. What, what do we want to tell Sunderland that we're going to do? Oh, we yes. Uh, we, the, I would just do a vehicle for now unless we have time for a, um, yeah, you know, if we can put a, a vehicle. Let's vehicle commit to pretty, a vehicle and then simple. sign that. Yep. Yeah. The, I, I read over all the agreement. Yeah, I didn't see any issues. A lot for, you know, like... Um, other organizations like the Shriners, if they're coming there, there's all these, you know, right, sure. and then you, you're going to be videotaped, and you know, you can't claim anything, and you can't hold them liable or anything like that, like for you, well, because you we're going to be so wrong. famous for walking side. in there. So, right, exactly. So I think we're good, good to go. Uh, okay. And I really, you know, I, what I would like to do is put a call out to people in town if they would like to get together. We would love to do more, um, and love to make a presence in our neighbor community. I mean. I love Sunderland, my hometown is, you know, almost almost as much as Deerfield. But I um, but I just really would love to get people involved. And, and I mean, they are our neighbors and, and they're involved in so much of what we do. And I'd love to celebrate with them. And um, the more we can do and the more, you know, if there's any groups that could get, get together and have ideas that we could put together a float or um, or just even march and, and participate any way we can in celebrating for them, I would love to do that. So. And, and I just want to say we are forming the Deerfield birthday, 350th birthday committee this, this next month. So um, if people are interested, um, this is a great way to uh, opportunity to participate and mm -hmm. see what's really cool in Sunderland. Just like Good people ideas. went up to Conway and saw some really cool things up there. And yep. What we want to do. So 
and get ready for our celebration. Um, Shelburne is also celebrating so yes. this year. So, I mean, there's huge opportunities to see what other people are doing and um, fun things to, to ideas to steal. So, I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we have a motion to sign for one vehicle. Yes. yes. Uh, I make a motion. Uh, what do you want? To I make a motion that we agree to it. provide uh, a vehicle for the select board in the Sunderland's 300th anniversary yeah. celebration. Yep. To um, him. All those in. Oh, you're in a second, right? Yep. All second. Those, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. All right. We'll have Key fill it out. Okay. Okay. Um, that should be the only other thing that I had. I forgot that I had this announcement. We'll, we'll go on our web page because it's kind of complicated. But June 16th, 2018, hosted by Eagle Brook School, numerous scientists will lecture on the subjects of um, geology, archaeology, and um, pe um, pe pe paleontology. paleontology. Well, I got a problem with my tongue this, morning, <laughs> this evening. With the emphasis being on the Hudson and Connecticut River. Cool. Drainages of New England, symposium is free to the public. Collaboration of scientific um, uh, manuscripts will be with colored illustrations along with selective audience communications will be published, adding to our valley, valley history and school curriculum. Estimated cost of printing 500 copies is about $10,000. Donations are being accepted by Pocumpton Valley Memorial Association. Um, towards having this book published in the memo, memo of the check, please write archaeological archaeology 2018 symposium. Those who contribute to having this book published will be listed inside. PM, PVMA will mail a tax deductible receipt back. The finished book will be available through PVMA. This is all going on the website. So please go and um, also another Good news is that we ha received half of our um, our first payment of our um, pilot payment for in lieu of taxes from Deerfield Academy for fifty nine thousand five hundred. Thank you. And they will make the second payment in the spring. And I think we've covered just about everything. Right. Yes. Um, we are now going into executive session, and we will not come out in open session. This is the select board um, will be. Um, going into executive session as allowed by MGL chapter 30A section 21A6 to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real estate um, if the chair declares that open meeting may have a detrimental effect on negotiating the position of the public body. This is in relation to our marijuana issues. I, Trevor McDaniel. Oh, you're gonna make a motion. Oh. I thought you just made the motion. No. no? Okay. So I read that again. <laughs> I said the select board may. Oh, okay. So I make a motion. Um, the select board goes into executive session. Um, do I have to read anything else? Um, because just what I did. Right, the upper one. Yeah. Yes. Um, the select board will go into executive session because entering in. Um, Entering into executive session allows, um, as allowed by Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section A, excuse me, Mass <laughs> General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, 6, uh, to consider the purchase, exchange, and uh, lease or value of real property if the chair uh, declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the body. And um, Mass General Law, Chapter 30, uh, 30A, Section 3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or legislation um, if an open met meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, and so the chair declares. I, Trevor McDaniel. Uh, first, Kippy's going to second the oh. motion. Thank Sorry. you. Okay. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Henry Camosa. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope everybody has a lovely evening and Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. And be safe and healthy over the rest of the holidays.